Um, and it was. Yeah, I, I, I had a bad idea. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. not even in this recording. Why am I talking? No, no, just keep going, keep going. <laughs> Hi, welcome to the J Man Show. Everybody else is fired. Good what? Luck. Show now. Good what? Luck. No, You're my welcome. pension! No! I disagree! Well, too bad. Kaki is on his way. Kaki is on his way. This, is, on his this is free content. It is. Sure. You know what else is free content? What? What? Not this, it's a Patreon exclusive it's very it's very right. Yeah, Unless, you know what, you know Unless... what I would be freely content with? What's that? The death of Aloha. <laughs> you mean sometimes you gotta do it. <laughs> yeah, so this is gonna fucking tactically <laughs> racial <laughs> me on Twitter. <laughs> Tactical ratio inbound. <laughs> so. We pick up. Mm hmm with Beretta Pietro on her way to her new assignment. Mm. Beretta, you discovered something new and exciting. Tempest oh, HQ, you. as you knew it, is not actually Tempest Headquarters. No? No, Tempest HQ in the city is more like a, a gathering point, a depot, a storage area. You mean but, I'm not going to have to spend all of my time in that giant ice box? No, in fact, you were requested to report like, it's like a day or two after the, um, or two days. It's two days after the Lord of Lanterns incident. And you're asked to report to Tempest Headquarters, which is a, it's like, it's a, a section of farmland that Tempest purchased outside the city uh, in order to properly garrison all of their troops. They can't exactly fit everyone inside the city and a full-blown military occupation would, you know, spook people. Not that they're not spooking people already. So, um... That's incredibly neat. I'm glad that one of our characters has chosen to explore this route. <laughs> <laughs> what a wise decision, Breda Pietro, you say, as you walk for the requisite hour to reach the farmstead outside the city. You're gonna want to take a left up ahead once your map uh, fully loads. Oh, okay. You you, um, you remember hearing, actually, over the last day or two, that the Tempest remains in shape by jogging the territory between the city and the farmstead out here. It's, uh, looking across all this area, you realize this place is huge. Like, mm -hmm. the full scope of Tempest's forces at this point sort of snaps into view. In the city, Tide and Tempest are comparable, if not Tide-skewed. But, when you take a look at this area, the reality of the situation fully sets in. Tempest is an armed military force. There's no doubt about it. And this is a military base. This is exciting. <laughs> I, I, I assume this, this path is just worn with, like, yeah. boot stumps. Oh, <laughs> God, yeah. Back and forth. Oh, from, yeah, it's from the city to, to, uh, dirt. to the barracks, yeah. Yeah, no, like, the ground is cracked and disrupted. Uh, the path's gone to shit. This was probably nice at some point, but it's been pounded into nothingness. You walk, your coat swaying behind you, revealing an emblazoned Tempest logo. As, pretty cool. Pretty cool. as you approach the gate, you see something. A rather imposing man stands waiting for you. This man oh, please, is leaning don't up impose me. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't really acknowledge you as you walk up, one eye kind of leering at you, but otherwise his leaned over posture against the wall remains basically unchanged. Um, hello there. I hope everything is well. Toothpick. He, in his mouth, wiggles from one side to the other. Eh. I, I brought you coffee. <laughs> he stops. He's gonna turn around. Without saying anything, he's gonna take the coffee from you and take a sip. How good is the coffee? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't make it. I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> Roll who'd, for it. Who'd you, who'd you buy it from? What cafe? This is important. We have every cafe set up. Does, does Mallow's uh, restaurant have coffee at it? Darn straight, like a, it does. Bakery? Yes, good. Bam. She, felt, she feels like she would have coffee. 
Yeah, no, Mallow does. Uh, Mallow makes uh, coffee with the consistency of abyssal mud. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna roll with Mallow's blue stat right here, right on, now. Mallow. Time to see how Mallow does with the coffee. Ah, uh, yes. I've got to um. I've got to reload. Uh. I've got to reload the the fucking mm -hmm. API really quick because you know. Yeah. Classic. API scripts. Doink doink Mallow doink. Roll this. The spirit of Mallow. Character initialized. I like how uh, Mallow's just behind you like a stand. Also. Yeah. Uh, like my stand. Also. Like, uh, is... Could you kick the oh, jukebox fuck. as well? Nice. Good coffee. Uh, that didn't add her bonus, which is a. Plus five, so um, twenty six. Damn good copy. Ah, uh, Mallow. Ah, uh, Mallow. You rolled on a blue. She did roll on a blue. Mallow. That makes yeah. this a clash. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> I hate your coffee. Throws it on the ground. <laughs> yeah, roll, roll to do with that blue. It, it's fine. He does. We haven't plugged in his stats no. yet. Let me just. Let's see if he crits and spits the coffee in your face. Hey. Please spit my face. Hey, sweet, baby, <laughs> sweet baby Jathan, could you uh, kick the jukebox? Yeah. Oh, kick the jukebox again? Yeah. Yeah. So I get some sweet tunes. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. That, was, that was close. Oh, okay. It was shockingly close, but at the same time, Mallow's coffee meets your approval. Yeah. So, uh, how's that right. coffee? It's <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought he keeps so. drinking it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I needed to know. <laughs> As you walk in, your eyes sort of scan over to the side, and you immediately notice someone perched up on a crate watching everybody perform their morning duties. Oh. Hello. <laughs> oh, hello, boss. I didn't see you there. Yeah, yes, I've... I'm just doing my job. I bet uh, you are. I'm sure you're doing all of your morning exercises. Oh, 100% every single day. That's why I'm so fit. <laughs> I can Sin, tell by your glutes. Sid glares over to the side. Sid <laughs> glares over to the side. Yes. He's on a special regimen, I suppose. It involves mostly lounging around and commenting needlessly. I'm just making sure you guys don't hurt yourself. What if there was an accident? I'd be here to help instantly. <laughs> Loretta steps in between these two and produces two more cups of mallow coffee. <laughs> I got you guys coffee. His, oh, uh, Sid's eyes pinch shut and he gives you a big, wide, toothy grin. Oh, thank you very much. Um, that's extremely considerate of you. Always love a suck up. <laughs> oh, me a suck up? Never. <laughs> or see more your style, boss. <laughs> I take the coffee. <laughs> uh, Sid, like, sort of strokes his chin. I have to admit, you're not exactly what I expected based on... He trails off Teach's description. Oh. What did you expect? Um, how did she put it? Uh, a Spitfire, a Hellraiser. Oh. I've never considered myself one to make any trouble for anyone. <laughs> I'm certain. <laughs> he says believing you zero. Then again, well, I suppose pe many people see me in different ways. I have no control over how they do. I'm... I'm just a captain. Nothing more. I run drills. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He sort of like loosens up his shoulders. This soldier is old and like... Various battle scars rest heavy on his face. You can tell he's been in this line of work for a long time. Oh, Very nothing less. Uh, <laughs> Captain holds many things that, you know, go without being said. So he, he kind of <laughs> nods slightly. Um, looks over to Barbados. Mm -hmm. Just the same. I am a little surprised that the doctor was sent out here today. The, uh, he motions with his head over this way. Sarisa, tell either of you about your assignment. Hmm, let's see. Does Sarisa ever say much? 
Yes, if you know how to get her talking. I know how to get her talking. <laughs> Ryuji! Uh, why don't you show these two to their assignment? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't say much, does he? Oh, he Once does again. if you don't. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> these two hey. exchange looks. Hey, Sid. This guy is just wandering up in this fucking... He, it seems like he's either angry at the world or constantly ready to fight it. Where is it? He sort of like... Sid sort of sighs. Points back that way. <laughs> eh. Nods. What are we about to behold? <laughs> um, well, he uh, he looks over to Brada. There's no reason you should know, but he looks over to Barbados and gets that shitty wide grin again. I'd actually be shocked if you would you'd ever been in there yourself. Please have fun. So uh, this way. He nods. Nice. Go ahead. You're both ge both guests of honor. Mmm. Mmm. I don't like it when Sid smiles, Beretta. <laughs> Why not? He's got such a handsome grin. Mm, yeah, it means. It really does. Oh, yeah, it means. This man, hmm? this man has finished his coffee. You drank he it so fast. Eating, he starts eating the cup. <laughs> I respect that. Can't waste nutrition. <laughs> He kicks the doors open. The large, rustic doors. And you make your way inside. And you're immediately greeted by an overwhelming stench. Door uh. cracks open. Ah. Ryuji wanders over here. There's a couple of brooms. He kicks them at you. <laughs> Uh, uh, oh, great. A couple of brooms. Yes, don't you see, boss? Our assignment is to clean up all of this smelly hay. <laughs> Our assignment? I Ryuji's assume. just staring at Barbados. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Our assignment? Did I, did I, did I do, um, <laughs> he thinks about it. Did I do anything to upset Sarisa? Um, and I then can't imagine you upsetting anyone, boss. Verbatim, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, what did I, what did I do to deserve this? I know this? exactly what I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, what, did, what can I possibly have done to do this? You reflect to yourself. Um, <laughs> hmm. Barbados, you know for a fact that this won't be the entirety of the day's activities. <laughs> These are training hours. By necessity, there's no work to be done during this time. Everyone's supposed to be spending this time bettering themselves. Work starts a few hours from now. Likely, unfortunately, you being called out to the farm is an excuse to make you do some physical labor before receiving your actual assignment. <laughs> ah, wonderful. You can hear the dogs from here. You literally can. It's very loud. There's a couple of them, and you don't see where they are. Yep. I, I consider them to be the hounds of self-improvement. Mm, yes. So this is where we uh keep the horses? You, you ever guys have horses? The, 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 uh, just sort of leans over his face, does the ominous manga thing. You ever been to the stables, Barbados? Why would I? But what else would you stabilize? <laughs> Armor beasts. Ah. Uh, yes. Okay, Bretta, get to work. <laughs> okay, I wouldn't want you to hurt your doctoring hands. Please give me your your uh, shovel and broom. I, I will handle it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feel free. Dual wield if you so please. Ah, I'm actually used to having three, but that's fine. Two is good. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what you got, new meat. <laughs> okay, Brada, you're gonna you're gonna roll to clean up some stables. Yes. 
<laughs> with my two broom style. Ah, <laughs> excellent. Mm. So, yeah, give me. So, first of all, drop your swing. It's the start of a new session. And then oh. I'm going to ask a roll to do from you, but you can obviously reflect first, do your roll to die, and tell me how Brett is feeling about all yes. this. Let's see how we feel about being stuck with all of the cleaning. <laughs> God, Beretta's mentally so powerful. <laughs> so then, <laughs> I lock in yellow. Ah, yes, <laughs> yellow. <laughs> yellow. And uh, let's see how we clean. No. How do you feel, Not great. though? How do you, you gotta tell me, with that roll to reflect, how do you feel ah, yes. about this? How do we feel? How does yellow mean Yeah, how does yellow feel? feel? Um, I think there's an understanding that there is, uh, there is meaning behind even the most menial of labor tasks. <laughs> and she's eager to take on this task, even if it takes away from the learning experience of her boss. <laughs> Barbados, how do you feel about any of this? I don't know, let me see, roll to die. Uh, uh. Uh. <laughs> well, <laughs> feel free, have fun. <laughs> this won't bite me in the ass later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bretta, I'm gonna roll versus you to see how well you do. For hay. Rolling for hay. You do a really good job, actually. You you start at the top, you work your way down, and before too long, you've actually cleaned up a storm, clearing out a lot of this. You leave the bones because you think it might be part of the decor. The bones? Bones hey. are cool. Bones. Do horses chew on bones? <laughs> well, they're, they're not horses. They're armored beasts. Uh, no. I... <laughs> okay. If there were If there were horses, then I'd be even more excited by this opportunity. We we have horses. Uh, horse. Can you can you show me? They're out on patrol right now. We 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 have you, horses, you have, right? You don't have to sh you don't have to show me now. Just promise that you'll show me one day. I, GM, where yeah. where are the horses, GM? They're out on patrol right now. Okay. Of course. Oh, thank God. Okay. They're totally real, Barbados. <laughs> Okay. The fuck's a horse? <laughs> They're totally real, Barbados. <laughs> I, I, it's fine. I'll tell you when you're older. <laughs> Bretta, Bret give me Bretta another is roll. Tearing, to... Is tearing through this stuff with with one of the brooms in her hands and one of the brooms in her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Bretta, give me another roll to do. Yes. Yes. Ah. You eviscerate your tasks as you move through, absolutely cleaning up a storm. Obviously, that was understood that I would be able to clean up this and do this entire task on my own. But the question is, did I look cool? <laughs> that's a that's more of a question for the two people observing you. You're about as cool as you can look cleaning up hay and horse shit, probably. <laughs> Let's see Excellent. what how Ryuji feels. Oh, you, you got lucky. Not bad. <laughs> I aim to impress. Mm -hmm. Good job, good job. I didn't have to do anything. Wonderful. Uh, is there I any- live for your approval, boss. Is there anything else we need to do? Cause uh, he looks around, like anything behind that big steel ominous door up there? Looking behind the big steel ominous door up there. It really is big steel and very ominous. Yeah, what is up with that door? <laughs> it doesn't really fit the decor. No. I didn't it's mean to rhyme. Hyper reinforced is the big thing you notice. Hmm. I'm just must... gonna go over. He's gonna use the other highest step that he just rolled. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean you He's don't know? He's gonna kick the door to try and open it. <laughs> it's... You kicked the door. It is so thoroughly reinforced. Just the pain travels up your leg. There's no getting through this. Hmm. Well, I did hear that this time period before we get our assignment is for betterment and self-improvement. <sighs> I wouldn't recommend going through anything that's locked like that here. Even oh, if... is bleeding. <laughs> oh god, let me just <laughs> I, I appreciate the gusto 
Mm -hmm. So wh the what's what? the? Oh, let me watch the doctor. <laughs> what what do you know? <laughs> <laughs> what do I know about what? Go Barbados. <laughs> go where? <laughs> it's fine. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just messing with you, you know. I'm my good friend Ryuji, you know. It's, nothing's bad. Yeah, I just goofing, you know. <laughs> uh, he uh, just like, you know, he probably carries like a satchel filled with like medical supplies, and he, you know, just he just uh, you know, wraps it up, makes sure he's like, oh no, no permanent damage. Just don't go uh, kicking uh, big steel doors. Oh yes, I wouldn't eh. recommend it. I'm not even a doctor, and I know that. <laughs> look, I, I under- has a tiny, tiny dent in it. Uh, look, I, I, I know you love kicking doors more than anyone. Uh, uh, just not that one, I guess. Uh, come, come back when you're stronger to kick the door down. <laughs> Ryuji, would you say that kicking doors is what makes you feel whole? <laughs> is it your what? raison d'etre? <laughs> what did you just the say? What are you saying? <laughs> You're meaning to live. <laughs> no. Hmm. Then good. I think that you have much more that you can do beyond kicking doors. When he said no, he had like the extra rendered manga face when something <laughs> serious is happening. Oh. What what is Ryuji's rank, Lieutenant? Uh, Ryuji's the captain as well. Okay, okay, okay. Good. You, cool. you Barbados, you outrank everyone. Yeah, I mean, yeah, of course, that's a given. Of course, but, he's the boss. Well, so, almost everyone. No, you're not Sarisa. Like, <clears throat> you hear a call from a, or, uh, down the hall. Good morning, everyone. Oh tap, no! Oh tap, 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 God! <laughs> oh. Oh, I, I, you said not everyone, and then I thought of my head, I was like, oh, him, and then now he's here. Uh, ah, <laughs> uh, well, you see, Brita, um, uh, uh, this one's trouble. Trouble? Trouble. In what way? Look at him. How can you trust a man with his eyes closed? What? <laughs> Barbados, are you still, still seriously on about that? I don't trust you. <sighs> Who do you trust? He walks over in this direction and holds out a hand. Nice to meet you. Um, I believe you're consulting exorcist Beretta Pietro. I believe that is my official rank. It's a pleasure to be met. <laughs> my name is Morph. I um handle public relations, diplomatic relations, and most everything around the Tempest. He smiles. Oh, what a fascinating position to mm -hmm. handle the entire outward looking eyes of this organization. He, uh, he sort of like nods a bit and then nods back to Ryuji in the back. Well, Ryuji chews his toothpick and nods back. <laughs> I was told that both of you would be in the stables and that you'd be occupied for most of the morning, but. It mm -hmm. appears my information was incorrect. No, yeah, we knocked out that work pretty quickly. We sure did, as a team. <laughs> <laughs> I supervised. <laughs> yeah, no! Ryuji makes a ch noise. <laughs> More flag looks at Beretta, who's still holding both of the mops. <laughs> <laughs> and is still clearly uh, covered in hay. He's like, mm. well, noted. He takes a step back this way. Well. Dr. Barbados, for the <laughs> remainder of today, you will not be serving as the Tempest's doctor. We found a substitute. Don't no. worry, your patients will be seen to. That's fine. Instead, you both have been given an interesting assignment, one that would normally be reserved for me, so I wish you both the best of luck in completing it. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, public relations assignment. <laughs> public yes. relations. Your job is to move throughout the city, engage with the various exorcists, magi, and others that have so recently ingratiated themselves to our um, great city, and um, assess their threat level. <laughs> okay, that sounds 
Sounds like a fun task. <laughs> Morph kind of nods. Cerisa said that my personality would not draw out the fire required to properly assess them. Oh. <laughs> he looks over to you meaningfully, Barbados. <laughs> I don't know if that's a compliment or an insult, honestly. Mm, I wonder different... what he, she could have meant by this. <laughs> different people have different uses. <laughs> he, uh, he takes a step back over this way. If you want, we can perhaps give you a ride back to the city. I believe one of our horses is stabled around. No, hold on. He's like, he moves back and forth. He said horses. See? A what? This is the <laughs> <laughs> oh, I apologize. I shouldn't have gotten your hopes up. It appears that they're all out on patrol. <laughs> they're real, I swear. <laughs> well, if you want, perhaps, my own intelligence related to the various magi within the city, I can provide you a detailed report. Alternatively, you can rely on your own instincts. Ultimately, it's up to you. Hmm, well, eh, I think I know where to find, you know, most of these troublesome people. While I was, uh, while I would always consider knowledge to be power, I guess I would default to my boss on this one. <laughs> I, oh, God damn it. <laughs> Morph makes a noticeable show of reaching into his coat, pulling out a thick wad of dossiers, like thumbing through them and going, oh, Actually, oh, actually, I think those if are- If you no, know no. better. Yeah, no, it's, uh, Morph, hand them over. Give them here. <laughs> I, I, Those <laughs> dossiers do look thick. <laughs> <laughs> look, it, it's I, I probably already know uh, just in case there is some information I do not know on on here. I I, I think uh, having uh, dossiers on a bunch of troublesome people would be uh, great information for me to know. Not to say that uh, Doctor Barbados here doesn't know everything that he needs to know, but me, a lowly initiate, should. Uh, have more documents to understand what's going on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Test. I, I, it'll be good to test Beretta's reading comprehension skills. <laughs> <laughs> Morph just tolerable. Morph just lightly smiles. So, uh, you all are going to roll the dossier gotcha for me. Um, each of you are going to roll um, three times. D twenty three times. My boy. Roll one d20. One. Ah, of course. Two. Three. Okay, excellent. A 20? I a never 20. roll those. A, a three. three. A four. four. A 20. <laughs> 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 Holy crap, so, uh, Yay, you guys, a farce. you get some repetitive information here, uh, the threes no. and the 20s, uh, are going to be the same, but we'll take the 13. You're such a kiss-ass. You're just copying <laughs> everything I'm doing. I just want to be, any, I want to be just like you, boss. <laughs> oh, boy, so from the list, let me pull up this one. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, you got a four as well? Yeah. Oh. You really went for the freaks this time. Always. Um, okay. Uh, and 13? Yeah, 13. Okay, uh, so. We're gonna start with, uh... Oh, God. Um... He hands you a, uh, a dossier. This one is... There's a picture attached to it, but the picture looks wrong. Like, it captured the person from... It captured them from the wrong direction, but that's weird because, like, judging by the clothes, the patterning on it, it looks like it captured them from the front, but there's no, there's no face here. It's just a mass of matted hair, a hat, and the angle is all off. Oh, no. This is a picture taken from somebody departing a boat. Yes, we managed to capture this person's image when they were departing a boat from Mitsudai, I believe. His name is Momozawa the Terrible. Um, oh, oh, he sounds lovely. <laughs> from what I understand, he can be. Alternatively, I've heard he's a problem causer and rogue element. Determining whether or not he will be an issue for the Calamity Tempest is uh, your job. Or he uh, he flicks the dossier again and hands it over to Bretta. 
Alternatively, it's not. These are just piece of pieces of advice of people you can potentially pursue. Ultimately, if you wish to simply wander the city, that's <laughs> that's your decision. This is only my advice. He uh, reaches down again and pulls out another one. And looking at it, you see a you see a woman with a beaming smile. She is gorgeous. And uh, Beretta, this immediately evokes memories. This is Tiara Subaki. She oh. recently took up residence in the mansion just outside of the 13th Ward. Um, she is the captain of the guard there and apparently a very potent mage. She's mm. been coordinating efforts involving the shrine in the 13th Ward. Apparently there's... Oh, let's go there. <laughs> <laughs> Well then, <laughs> he just hands you the dossier and stuff. I've already met this person before. I don't really think they're a threat, but if no, you no really... I think it's it's worth a second investigation. <laughs> okay. It's just Next. you know you can't trust shrines. <laughs> Next is a well-known factor of the city and one that you're intimately familiar with, uh, reaches down and hands you a dossier. Mallow's picture, exhausted, <laughs> face down on a cafe counter is here, hands it over to you. We're oh. uncertain of the role or presence of the, Cy uh, the Marigold Scion currently. At the very least, a check-in would be nice, but ultimately we've already categorized this one as a low threat. Um, but a good cup of joe. <laughs> oh, that's where you got this. <laughs> and um, finally, the crit 20, he reaches down and uh, pulls out one. We actually managed to, um, I suppose, get a little lucky with this. Uh, this person has been quite reclusive, but... Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. <laughs> what? Is she, uh, he hands over a picture of a woman who's, oh God. This picture is taken between a set of trees, like clearly from someone incognito, but at the same time, looking at her face, um, it's a little upsetting. She appears to be looking directly at the cameraman. Oh, oh she's beautiful. This is, um, actually an unknown element. He, uh, he taps the dossier again. We're uncertain of her role, but we're sure of a few things. One, she made contact with the Iris family immediately on arriving in Indigo and mm. purchased a large swath of land, the old noble district. Um, you can buy that? If you, you can buy anything with enough money. <laughs> he kind of nods. She's, we believe, taken up residence somewhere within the district, but we haven't investigated personally ourselves. If you pursue this one, you will be quite literally putting in... You'll be putting in all the legwork. Well, as we have learned this morning, I don't mind a little bit of legwork. <laughs> yeah, and this is the most interesting one out of the ones you've given us, so... <laughs> well, he, uh, he straightens himself up. I've done my part. Uh, I wish you all a good morning. He bows, tips his hat slightly, and starts to walk off. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, and Barbados. Morph. How are you enjoying the apartment? It's fine. Oh, you don't live in the barracks? <laughs> Hey, Morph. Yes. <laughs> uh, just, just me and you. No one else. Let's come. Come on. You're, you're not that busy. Oh, I'm, your, I'm your shadow. You won't even know that I'm here. <laughs> hey, In the Morph. background, Ryuji goes back to kicking the door. <laughs> yes. Um. Uh. You know what you're doing. I'm afraid I. Yeah. You're going to need to clarify it for me. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, everything's fine. I, um, yes. You know what uh, I'm doing. The nondescript apartments I live in is very great. Now, uh, I was now in, go. 
I was engaging in casual small talk. Yeah, casual small talk, you know how the apartment's been. We, we're not strangers. Gorgeous, lavish, do you enjoy your 30-story view? 30-story <laughs> <laughs> view, that could only be one of two buildings. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no, go, 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 before you say too much. Please As leave. You shove them off in this direction. I already have a problem with people breaking into my apartment. I don't need anyone else. <laughs> never break the law. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but, um, well, hmm. perhaps I'm not good at this discussion as I'm not a homeowner myself. I apologize for my impropriety. <laughs> yeah, stay homeless. <laughs> <laughs> you shove them outside and slam the door. <laughs> You've been having problems with break-ins, boss? <laughs> yes. Um, if I could, I would recommend a good home security system. Oh, don't worry. My problem's way outside the city now. <laughs> That's not ominous. <laughs> and with that, we're going to cut away from you <laughs> and go somewhere else in the city. Over here. Uh. Door cracks open of a secluded little potion shop. The dinger touches the ground and ding 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 sprints ding 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 motion. Step walking through, scoops up the dinger and gives a little pat on the bell. Plop. There's a good little dude. And Knocks on the door. Mike? Some, someone pokes his head out through the cat door at the bottom. Oh, you just missed him. Oh, crawl, hey, crawl, crawl, crawl. You're not with crawl. him today? No, I'm supposed to watch the shop in case anyone came to check on him. Well, good, good on you. That's exactly what I came over for. Wanted to see how he was doing. He's doing also, to return this clock, he holds up a small clock. I'm pretty sure Nick stole it. <laughs> he picks up the clock in his mouth, runs it through the cat door, and you hear jangling in the background. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. yeah good luck getting anything else, getting too much back, but, you know, keep an eye out. I'm sure it's been distributed across the district already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he uh he touches down. Yes, if you're worried about him, I he did wake up. Um, those two days of rest seem to have done him well. He uh went back to the usual spot. Oh, well, all right then. I'll probably swing by if I can just to see how he's doing. Hmm. Thank Is he you pushing very himself? Much. Uh, he sort of looks back at the door. It's moments like this that I don't think either of us know. Elsewhere in the city, Amai, you've climbed up to a location <laughs> that you use to relax. Let's do, let's do uh, this one. Yeah, this one's good. The top of the clock tower. <gasps> So pretty. <laughs> Am I? It's really pretty. <laughs> yeah. Am I? How, uh, the last few days have been a blur because, um, exerting yourself, creating not only that magic, but forging that connection and having it ripped away caused you to sort of bleed energy for a little bit. You're feeling better now, but you were out for a day and a half. It's been exhausting. How, tell me, how are you feeling? Not good. <laughs> um, I woke up in one of the worst moods he's been in for quite some time. Um, he's, he's been in a funk inside his own head. Uh, trying to calm down, but getting frustrated and annoyed uh, over and over again. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's been a while since he's been like this. <laughs> yeah. You're stuck. You're looking out over the city and just trying to figure out 
the next step is. And you hear a, uh... You hear an almost imperceptible rush of wind that you are now familiar with. But, for the most part, it's a sound that people tend to ignore or overlook in this city at large or this district. As a figure stands next to you on this great overlook. That's right, the first date on top of the clock tower is between Amai and this no-name. <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> he, uh, he sits with his back up against the wall. I see you're awake. Yes, yes, I am. Mm -hmm. He, uh, like, looks over to you. I take it your efforts did not bear fruit. No. I was too... I was too hesitant. I could have done something. But I did nothing. Time to see how the gatekeeper. <laughs> God. <laughs> the gatekeeper hears your words and then actually stops. Like, stops his current train of thought. Hmm. As far as a person goes, I. I don't exactly have any deep or abiding humanity. I have my role, and I've been given the faculties to accomplish it. I can report what I observe. Perhaps that would be useful. He sits with his back, uh, he presses his back up against the wall, draws himself to his full height. He is a long, spindly creature. Significantly taller than you'd expect, but like, God, just rail thin. And he, um, he you're pretty sure, watches you. Do you know why I selected Sienna to be the Archmage of this district? No, no I don't. Sienna... <laughs> she lacks the expertise and the knowledge of Fumral. And... she lacks... The patience and kindness of Amai Morlai. He sort of scratches his chin. Emotion <laughs> dittoing one of yours. The reason that I selected Sienna to be the Archmage of this district is because if we were involved in some sort of a land war, I believe she would be our greatest asset. <laughs> Simply put, she has firepower. <laughs> he, he, he sits down on the ground and crosses his legs. Am I just brought out of his brood and is like, <laughs> to be honest, I, I kind of understand that. <laughs> in different ages, in the past, I would have selected either Fumrel or you. Unfortunately, the age that we live in right now, I have to consider things more brutally he says and sort of shakes his head and then he looks back over to you am i <clears throat> and it had been 10 years ago had you arrived 10 years ago you would most certainly be the archmage now that was an age when patience was required and kindness was as well mm -hmm. he uh he looks down and over the spotlights strobing the city skyline. But as it stands, our homeland has been invaded by actual armed military forces. Exorcists wander the city with a bloodthirst for creatures like myself. Right now is potentially an age of violence, and as such, I had to back the one with the highest potential for violence. He, um, as I scan back over to you, am I? I believe this is my rather roundabout way of saying. I don't particularly like the direction that our city has gone. I don't like the steps that I've taken. Given my choices. Given a choice 
of different indigos, I would much prefer the one in which I could elect you the position of Archmage. <laughs> <laughs> That's not our reality, however. He, uh, he looks to you. And, uh, stands. My, you remind me of the man that created me. Hmm. <laughs> oh, that enigmatic person. <laughs> he nods. You Same don't seem one. to be very fond of them. <laughs> they were... I was created to balance them out. He sort of looks away. You're familiar. Senra, was it? Yeah. <laughs> I was his Senra. <laughs> he, uh, he sort of lets out a low yeah. chuckle. <laughs> <laughs> he, he looks a little bit like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I... That man created this clock tower. Back when the Mirage District wasn't a faction. And it wasn't a hideaway for sad and damaged Legion. This place was originally built as a mage's guild. He sort of gestures down along the way. Mm. This area surrounding it. It's all apartments because it's student housing. This area, this is a place where people once came to learn. This clock tower was their gathering point. He kind of <laughs> taps it again. <laughs> you asked me if I liked my creator. To tell you the truth, he was an irresponsible man. Yeah. <laughs> Treated this place more like a clubhouse than a true place of learning. He, uh, looks at you, meaningfully. Hmm. Or that it was still such a place. Sometimes you just want to surround yourself with like-minded people. <laughs> I understand this. He, uh, he quietly nods. I miss... That age, I miss when the Mirage District was a guild. When we were not outsiders hiding, pushed to the fringes, but a group of companions and friends. I would have loved to see it. <sighs> I didn't have that a lot while I was growing up. I can sort of understand the idea. He sort of nods. I have to ask you a question. Forgive me for perhaps asking something that would betray the decision I made years ago. Do you think this district can take that shape once again? He looks out and leans on his elbows over. I think anything can happen. I definitely think it can. You can see it in the small communities, the small cliques, the friendships that are all around. People, people can't stay dour for too long. <laughs> <laughs> You you feel like you said something significant to the gate guardian in that moment. He seems to observe this, internalize it, and um, looks over to you. People can't stay dour for too long, huh? <laughs> a slight chuckle. Getting a laugh out of this guy <laughs> is always a feat. Um, he uh, he he shakes his head. Well, thank you for hearing me out. I don't know why I arrived here. <laughs> I don't know why I decided to make myself known. Perhaps it was some part of me wanted to help you, but I feel like I've been the one that's been helped in turn. Mm -hmm. I appreciate your company all the same. He, uh, nods, takes a step back this way. This clock tower hasn't moved for quite some time. 
It had a name, though. He sort of motions over to, uh... He motions over to a sigil on the wall, long since burn away, burned away. A flag ripped to tatters just by the years. This clock tower is four, five hundred years old. It's old. It's associated with the founding of the city. This thing is ancient. Mm. Abulak Ivala. <laughs> My, um, creator called it, um, the last word. <laughs> he looks back to you <laughs> in a language of his own invention. Mm. Magic powered by obscurity. He uh, taps on the glass once again. Now it's become a mournful thing. The last word indeed. <laughs> he just shakes his head back and forth and then hops, disappearing into the abyss over the city. <laughs> <sighs> Uh, Amai leans over the edge, resting, <laughs> thinking. He looks at his own hand and clenches his uh, fist. All right, Amai. <sighs> Can't stay dour for too long. <laughs> we have things to do. You make that quiet promise to yourself, bid farewell to the clock of, uh, the top of the clock tower, and head down into the district proper. Wind up down here. Doink. <gasps> and there's a... Hold on, what the heck is that? <laughs> there's something just <laughs> in the middle, there's something just lying in the middle of the square. Almost motionless there. It just just stays. It seems like a severed head. Is that a it severed take, head? Takes a step. Takes a step. Takes a step. Looks down. <laughs> you look down. And it jumps up. And from the base of the severed head extends a mass of oil and gears that forms almost a spider-like hand. And it crawls its way back this way, lopsided, scrapes its, like, forehead backwards across the ground, sprints up in this direction, and then rests and looks back up at the clock tower. And then looks over to you, those empty eyes full of gears. What time is it? Um... He, like, pats himself down. Does he have a watch? <laughs> yeah, oh, that's a big question. Yeah, my, it's like, it's like 11 a.m. You, you he doesn't have a shirt. Why would he have yeah. a watch? <laughs> yeah, that, he just knows the time. <laughs> that clock tower hasn't run in quite yeah. some time. And, like, it, it's showing, like, it's showing, like, 3.45 p.m. But you're like, it's 11 a.m. This, this little figure scrambles back and forth across the, uh, across the, uh, the, the stone. Do you know what the time is? What's the time? Do you know what the time is? It's around about 11. I, do you need any help? Walk, 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 walk. I am... Oh, okay, okay, come on, Jack. Let's let's get you back. Come on. <laughs> she picks up oh. she picks up the 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 spider creature. I'm sorry about that. Uh-huh. Hey am I? Uh, How are you doing? I'm I'm doing better. Uh who is this fellow? Oh, um this is uh this is Jack. <laughs> she pats the head, and the spider-like hand scrambles its way across the ground. Um, she's uh one of the older um, she's one of the older legion around here. I've been taking care of her over at the uh, motions with her head over to the apartment. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Um. She's, uh, I think she used to mine the clock tower, but, um, yeah, it hasn't worked in a bit, so. <laughs> Picks it up. The little, the little legion continues to go. What's the time? What's the time? What's the time? What's the time? And some players like, yeah, yeah, that's good. <laughs> the energy of, like, patting a grin. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, I'm glad you're feeling better. Um. I'm gonna 
I'm gonna walk her back. You, you doing okay? <sighs> I'm doing better. I'm doing better. That's great. Um, good to see you off and about. And then she starts to walk and then turns around and looks at you very, like, seriously. Um, am I? Mm -hmm. Uh, I heard what you did and, um, thank you for, uh, thanks for trying so hard. Somebody has to. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Sunflower gets a... <laughs> <laughs> for a second and then walks away holding the legion up <sighs> am I I have to ask you you've got plans to some extent Is it time to act on them as as well as he can um Excellent. I think the first person that he'd need to try and contact is Sia. Ah, fantastic. Perfect. Okay. Um we're going to we're going to do that uh after I cut back to uh the other two. So, mm -hmm. the direction that the session is going is very obvious. Yeah, you both are going to be investing, uh, investigating mages in in the city at, as a whole. Yes, you can decide to cross paths at any point and combine your two disparate paths. Of course, I want to. Or you could choose not to. It doesn't matter. Uh, regardless, you guys will do uh, in order. I believe the call of Tia was made. We'll be doing Tia and Sienna, and then after that point, I'll ask where y'all go next, and you could choose to cross paths, or you could just choose not to. Ultimately, it's your decision. So yes, um, we're going to uh, we're gonna we're gonna catch up with Tia. Well, actually, no, we're not immediately. Uh, I'm gonna make you guys walk into town together. You have to spend time in each other's company. Oh no! Oh, yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, let me drop you on Main Street. There's still balloons everywhere. No. Oh. Let me drop a bar data. Boink. And yeah. a Beretta. There you go. Mm. Very nice of them to give us a ride back. That <laughs> walk and jog is always the most painful part of my day. What do you mean ride? You rode on my back. <laughs> no. So, brother. What? Yes, boss. Uh, what do you think about exorcists, Beretta? About what? Exorcists, Beretta. Oh, well, you know, I have been an exorcist for all of a two weeks. Two weeks? Yes. What why are you an exorcist? Um you see, boss. Nobody chooses to be an exorcist. <laughs> uh-huh. The lifestyle is sort of just pushed upon you by a mm -hmm. series of unfortunate circumstances. So you feel like you're a hero? No, not at all. Just somebody doing a job that nobody else would do. <laughs> sure, a job that no one else would do. All exorcists are shams and awful people, Moretto. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Do you know why that is? I have an idea, but please tell. Well, why? that's why I asked you why you're an exorcist. Exorcist, usually, obviously it's a job that has a lot of reason behind it. You know, people do it for justice, people do it for money, people do it for glory, and all those things can get very muddy very quickly. Ah, uh, yes, you seem like you've thought about this before. It's a job of ideals, Brodo. I think about many things a lot. <laughs> Especially about how I don't like things. <laughs> oh, but what about the things that you do like? Things that I do like? Uh, yeah. I like things. <laughs> like what, for example? Not that I would take note and try and bring those things to you. Uh... Mmm. <laughs> he thinks about it. 
Come on, uh, one thing that you like. One thing that one doesn't make you sick thing to your stomach. That I like that doesn't make me sick to my stomach. Uh, annoying people. Oh, then you should just be having a wonderful time right now. <laughs> Am I annoying you? <laughs> oh, I thought you said you liked annoying people. I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got him! <laughs> but yes, so the people that we're going to be talking to are, for the most, well, you know, we're trying to find some of those people, though two of the people on the list are not indeed exorcists themselves. They are just uh, more common people. The uh, Subaki, which is weird because they told me they were Camellia when we met. Uh, <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, it can be confusing. Yes. But yeah, we are after a group of horrible, uh, clout chasing fake people, correct? I, I guess. So you seem like you have opinions. Do I have opinions? <laughs> my I, opinions are your opinions, boss. I'm just here to learn. Please, you're making it hard to do my job by being such a kiss ass. Could you, uh, could you be honest for once? You have my permission to just be yourself. You know that, right? Uh, but what is ourselves? I... Uh, I don't know. Good question. You it's a hear... valuable question. Are, are we not something that we perceive, or are we a combination of what others perceive? Hmm. Hey, uh... Hey, Rui? Oh, God. Alright. Rui. <laughs> yo, 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 Rui. You hear that? Yeah. Heard that all right? What do you say we stay clear of that conversation? <laughs> yeah, it sounds good. <laughs> Fuck those guys. Walk. <laughs> the Tide Exorcist Squad just sees you two and then moves aside in the road. Oh, I was worried. I thought we were going to have a inter-gang rumble. No, no, no. Fighting in the city is kind of stupid anyways. Oh yeah, I would never fight in the city. That would be completely cringe. <laughs> Which way are we going? I, I think, yeah, I was allowed to say this way is its 13th ward, yeah. I I say left is always to the 13th ward. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing more left than the 13th ward. How That's long it. have you been in the city, bo uh, boss? Um... Barbados? Oh, man, I've been in the city for a few years now. Uh, not like I wasn't born here, but, you know, it's just three, two years, some somewhere around there. I don't really keep track often. Oh, well, do you find that you like it? Oh, it's a very accepting place. <laughs> uh. By accepting, I mean, I don't need a medical license, <laughs> I say. Uh, you probably do, but I don't listen. Oh, well, this is a bit of a lawless region, isn't it? Uh, there are laws, apparently. Uh, just yeah, I've, I've recently heard that there are lawyers, but it just doesn't make sense because there's not really much of a police force. No, you need people to enforce them, and uh, I work for the people who enforce them, so... Uh... What are they going to do? Arrest me and fire me? That would be stupid. Oh, yeah, that would be stupid. That would leave them without an unlicensed doctor. Yeah, I'm the best doctor in the city. Mm hmm. So I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> Test you don't even have are a gone. Yeah, who needs that stuff, anyways? I, I think license just kind of constrict yourself. I'm more of a free form worker. Ah, like water, but a doctor. Yeah, like water, like a doctor. Yes. Uh, He looks at these. Uh, armored individuals. Uh, I'd probably recommend, like, recognize yeah. these guys as Tsubaki guards because we had a meeting and it's like, yes, these armored people. And it's like, yeah. yeah. I would oh. also recognize this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, hello. They, like, look over to you, see the Tempest sigil, and, like, sort of look down. Hello. Yes, uh, I am looking for uh, Tia Tsubaki. Hmm. Oh, you're looking for the captain. Uh, motions with their hat over in that direction. 13th Ward, uh, currently either currently either meeting with Kazuya or in the shrine. Uh, good luck. <laughs> oh, then I suppose <laughs> we should check the shrine. Let's go. 
I, why do you really like shrines? Uh, just uh, a bit religious, that's all. Religious? What do you worship? Um, myself. <laughs> there is a god within all of us. I, I can't argue with that. <laughs> <laughs> you walk to the 13th ward. Ah, yes. 13th ward. A nice place, wonderful food. Is food one of the things that don't make you sick to your stomach? I, eating is nice. Uh, you know, but surely I, you eat well because you don't exercise much. I, <laughs> what does... Wouldn't eating well make you fat if you didn't exercise? No, you eat correctly, which means that it complements your physique. Sure, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> No. But you like the 13th ward, then? Like the 13th the ward? Yeah. I I guess I like the 13th ward. I'm I'm neutral about it. I don't really step oh, around here often. I, if I, you said that I might be honest with you, correct? Yeah, go ahead. It reminds me of a culture that I have that I'm not particularly close to. So... I don't know. No. It, feel, it feels like home, just not a home that I've lived in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, hey, at least you have somewhere that feels like home. You don't? Oh, uh, it's... Hmm. I mean... I Where guess is not. home for you, boss? Where is home for me? Where I yeah. am, I guess. Oh, no, but you must have been born somewhere. You were born, correct? Yes, I was born somewhere. Somewhere that I am not going to speak of. <laughs> okay, I won't pry. I, that's, a, that's a first. <laughs> Usually I have to go in a large spiel about how speaking its name brings evil and uh, unbad things. You know, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Unbad things are good things, boss. <laughs> I... <laughs> Shrines up there. Yes, yes. I. But I respect a secret or two. So long as you can respect mine. I, what secrets do you have? Oh, uh, nothing to speak of. <laughs> They're secrets after all. True. Oh, here's a shrine. I, there, there they go. <laughs> Come in. And you look at this. It's a relatively small shrine. Hmm. It's got, um... It's got a rather hmm, pleasing construction. Yeah, it looks it looks nice. The brilliant trees on either side sort of draw attention to the central figure, uh, sort of ensconced in this in this almost lantern-like structure is a statue of what appears to be a fox with a multitude of tails. And is there the hmm. person kneeling before the shrine? Seems uh, relatively focused up on it. Yeah. Wonders close. Tia Camellia. <laughs> she peeks an eye open. Oh, well, if it isn't Dr. Barbados, what brings you to the shrine today? Well, you see, I am investigating certain things in this city, including people with uh, high magic. Mm. Um potential dangerous individuals and while I did not deem you uh, you're dangerous in a certain way definitely but I did not deem I didn't want to deem you dangerous as in like a uh, threat to society way but uh, my uh, underling here really wanted to see you for some reason so uh, oh I see how considerate she sort of trails off and looks over to Beretta Beretta Pietro I'll be damned have we met? Yeah, of course we have. Um, I'd heard you were back in the city. Thanks for treating Elixia well the other day. Oh, uh, it's the least I could do. <laughs> She's got a lot of heart. <laughs> Tia, like, sort of smiles and nods. I'm certainly glad you think so. Well, you're here to assess my threat level, correct? Yes, yes. our dossier here says that you are very much a threat. Oh, I see. Um, well... Mm -hmm. Good news about that. I've never focused on my magic a day in my life. 
Nah, it doesn't matter if you focus on your magic or not, for your magic to be a threat. If anything, not focusing on your magic when you have so much of it makes you a threat. Uh, I suppose okay. I can understand that point of view. Have you ever considered that it might lead to some sort of magical outpouring that you wouldn't be able to control because of your lack of focus? Nope. I'm constantly letting off at least a little bit of it. <laughs> oh, <Okay>. well, then <laughs> Beretta's taking fake notes. <laughs> I was about to say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Risk of magical discharge. None. Yes, yes. It's mostly, uh, there are other keen individuals in the city who could be more of threats, seeing as the exorcist expedition, migration, whatever the word is for things. It's fascinating. Maybe I'm only on your list because I'm affiliated with a rival faction. A rival faction? Probably, maybe, though mm. I do not see us coming to blows anytime soon. Do you consider your, your faction to be rivals to us? She's yeah. gonna think about that. She pauses. Yes, I think I do. It takes a very strong group of people in order to, you know, fight off riots, doing a massive parade. That's a show of power in the city, isn't it? Some would say that, yeah. yeah. And that's something that you feel responsible for in the city that is not your own? Hmm. She, uh, she sort of ponders for a second. Responsibility. Well, responsibility, ideals, and exactly where I point my blade is a matter for the person I've pledged my blade to. Mm, and yes. if I may be so bold, what is the intentions of the person you've pledged your blade to in this city? She, uh, she, she pauses. Hmm. You'd have to ask her yourself. I can speak to the broad strokes of the Camellia's, uh, the Camellia family's intent, but at the same time, I'm not going to pretend, even for a second, to fully grasp the plan for the city. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Understandable, yes. He uh, takes that and continues taking down fake notes. <laughs> yes. Beretta is copying his fake notes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I. I, is is this why did you want to come here anyways, Brett? I I knew this would go nowhere. Why like did did you expect something magical to happen? Oh, I'm always expecting. Oh. Some, yes, <laughs> Beretta. She throws her arms around you. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, something magical. Um, what are you doing here? I thought you had to go uh uh perform a secret mission outside the city or something. Ah, uh, yes, I'm currently on that secret mission. Very important Tempest business. Can't oh, tell you much about it. I see. Uh, but I found myself in the area and I thought I'd say hello. That's great. Um, I'm really glad you stopped by. Uh, we're currently taking a look at um the shrine. She sort of relaxes. We, uh, well, um, it used to be, it used to be blessed by something and uh, it suddenly uh, stopped. Oh, uh, suddenly stopped, huh? Mm. <laughs> Dude, and uh, how does a blessing suddenly stop? We don't know. That's why we're investigating it. T Tia did um, did praying to it work? <laughs> she kind of speaks up, and Tia gets a more difficult expression on her face for a second, and she's like, "Praying? Oh, right, of course. Yeah, I was praying deeply for the destruction of my enemies." <laughs> Oh, I there we go. Uh, there we go. <laughs> see, um, well, if that didn't work, uh, let's, I guess, try other things. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm still standing right here, after all. <laughs> Tia sort of lo looks over to you. So, well, yeah, the shrine that used to be sort of a cornerstone in the 13th Ward's existence has recently, um... It's mm -hmm. lost its blessing. It can no longer renew the blessings of others. No, that's troublesome. And yeah. unfortunate. She nods. So if you're looking for something that's a threat, you shouldn't be looking at me. You should be looking at whatever's capable of doing that. Yes, there's been a lot of strange events in the city as recently. Let's hmm. See. Let's see. So... 
Do you think something stole it? Do you think it just... It didn't fade. If it faded, you would have noticed but far by now. Exactly. No, it vanished all at once. She, uh, she moves forward. In fact, I... I was planning on having my own blessing renewed. Mm. But, uh, now that can no longer happen. I could see how that would be a problem. Uh, wouldn't you say that a, a blessing for some could be a curse to others? She, she turns and looks back. <laughs> yeah, I'm intimately acquainted with that idea. So... Is there anyone who might find this shrine's blessing to be a curse upon them? This shrine in particular. He is gonna... He is gonna roll for it. Hmm. Doink. She shakes her head. No one comes to mind, but both of you should be more familiar with the city than I am. Hmm. I don't know, removing the blessings from Raojin people seems kind of pointless anyways if they wanted to cripple your power or something, so I uh, might just be a simple thing of they hate you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was concerned about that. Though, uh, back up. Uh, I'm gonna do some stuff if you don't mind. She backs up. Anyone with magical power, if you could back up a little bit, I'm gonna do a little bit of fancy smanchy stuff. Oh, yeah, of, course. of course, the fancy smanchy stuff. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, I have no magical powers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, I'm going to use my magic in a weird way, Jay. Yeah. So, uh, my magic's poison. Yeah. I can just say that now. Yeah. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to create, create some sort of, uh, I guess, magical forensic spray by mm. uh, creating a poison that clings on to magic. Ooh, but at, in like fun. a lower like power so it's just like i could just spray it around and have it attached uh, to any magical traces here to see if something magical came in and stole it and dragged it somewhere or if yeah. things just disappeared as they were yeah okay uh give me a roll to die and yeah. then a roll to do but you have to tell me how you feel or you can just go straight roll to do i still have a uh roll to die oh uh, yeah you if you've got a swing in. set still you're fine but it doesn't uh, apply to this, I don't think, because it's my ah, purple. Yeah. I wouldn't apply yeah. it to your. Yeah, so what I'm going to so... do is, uh, I'm going to think. Yeah. Barbados is not doing this to help, really. He's doing this to satisfy his own kind of uh, curiosity, I guess is the best way to put it. Because, uh, like they said, if it was fading, people would have noticed before yeah. now. Definitely. Uh, so it's a case of why someone would do this. Do they just hate the 13th Ward? Is there something more chaotic going on? Uh, and to satisfy Barbados' own paranoia is why he's investigating this. Ah, and yes. Before he does this, he's going to uh, turn to Tia. Uh, anyone with a magical thing, you, unless you want to get sprayed with some uh, <laughs> things, I back up, because it might cling to you as well. She smiles. Oh, don't worry about me. Go ahead. Okay. And I'm going to roll to do. Whoop! Oh, excellent. So you spin around and start spraying. And yeah, you absolutely do blast you a little bit. And uh, you notice it doesn't exactly like stick to her. It more <laughs> hangs in the air around her, just making her sort of phosphorescent. And um, you, uh, you, the big thing that you focus on, though, is... You find out exactly what you wanted to know. Mm -hmm. This thing vanished into thin air. It mm -hmm. wasn't stolen or dragged away, but what's fascinating beyond that is there were basically runes carved into the surface of the statue that look more local, uh, that were clearly meant to contain the power within the statue to begin with. It wasn't able to leave. This thing wasn't just, like, stolen. It vanished into thin air after being functionally imprisoned here. Mmm. Mmm. Uh, so he's, after uh, revealing those things, he's probably just gonna snap his finger and dissipate the, yeah. the, the mist... Uh, and go, well... Special pheromones reveal, boss. <laughs> well, <Pheromones? laughs> the thing that you guys were keeping imprisoned here is obviously gone. It didn't escape through the runes. It just seemed to disappear, so maybe it just died. Hmm. She thinks about that and shakes her head. I don't think that would be the case. I think it'd leave behind something if it just 
died. I mean, a magical, magical spirit. Corpse. Yeah. I mean, sometimes things fade into nothing. She, uh, she, she looks, well, thank you very much for your counsel, Doctor. The most worrying thing is the fact that you were keeping something imprisoned here. She, uh, looks back. Hmm. I'd be curious to know more about that. Yeah, well, that's all I'm here to do. So, Tia Subaki, you lied about your name to me earlier. She, uh, she sort of, yeah, goes back and she's like, that I did. I wanted to see if you'd pick up on the Camellia name. Oh. Did you fall for her trap, boss? No. Nope, he didn't. I'm so not either, really... So hmm? either you're brilliant and very canny or completely witless. I'll let you decide that, uh, Greta. <laughs> by the way, when I said anyone with magic moved back, your uh, girlfriend here moved back. <laughs> yeah, well. So, uh, this person also has magic? Oh. I've never seen you around the city before. Oh, um, yeah, I, uh, I, I do have a great power harbored within me, she very seriously says. A great power, a great power. What kind of power? Hmm. She actually knows a thing or two about losing a blessing. Hey, uh, hey. Yeah? You don't have to answer any of these questions if you don't want to. Ah. Oh. Well, um... It's fine. Yeah. Not answering is more suspicious than answering, though. If you'll, if you'll excuse me, um, yeah, I don't, uh... She looks between the two of you. You guys are with the Calamity Tempest, right? Currently, yes. We are. She looks over to Beretta pleadingly. <laughs> but uh, it's nothing to worry about. We're not currently investigating her. There's no reason to pursue this any further. Mm-hmm. That's fine. I, heard I don't even think we have a dossier. That's good. And That's really good. Mm -hmm. We were given the option of either wandering around following dossiers or just following our noses. It seems like my nose has, uh, you know, led me to some great outcomes. Well, um, yeah, that's really nice. Um, <laughs> she just, like, tries to shuffle between the two of you awkwardly. Oh, allow, allow me to vouch for the threat level of my friend here. Mm -hmm. She's not. And if she yeah. was... She'd probably tell me. She nods. What about the great power within her? Uh, uh... <laughs> I think there's a great power within all of us, boss. <laughs> I think it's just a matter that. of finding it. Why don't you, uh, let's, I, I, I'm pretty sure Kazuya is getting lunch ready. Do you want to go over there? Hey, yeah. <laughs> she sort of cracks the door open and heads through. See you for dinner, hey, Jen. <laughs> she... She pokes her head back in. I, I'm looking forward to it. Tia slides in front of the door and is just like, well, it seems like you're already well acquainted with Agent. Yes, I am. Um, and there's no reason for the two of us to become any more acquainted. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. Um, treat her nice. She's been through a lot. I know. Bretta's sort of like, ah, uh, Bretta, you feel Tia's gaze on you for a second. <laughs> You've really grown up, haven't you? Yeah. You too? She, uh, she sort of shrugs. I don't think I'm a particularly good measure of my own growth. If you think so, though, I appreciate it. Did you do something with your hair? Uh, she, uh, grabs the doinker. I did, actually. I've been growing it out lately. After all, I can't get enough of these long golden locks. Uh, it's long, but there's something else different about it. I can't put my finger on it. <laughs> I could say the same about yours. Oh yeah, I cut that off on an island haunted well, by ghosts. A lot of it's gotten shorter, but uh, something's gotten longer too. Uh, yes, uh, we call that demon puberty. <laughs> what? Well, that makes a lot of sense. It used to be such a small little nub. <laughs> Barbados, how are you feeling about any of this? <laughs> oh, this is like, it's a little awkward. Uh, I feel completely left out of the conversation. He's like, oh man, what a 
lovely shrine. Uh, oh, thank you very much. It's a shrine to the Dread Goddess. No, the Dread Goddess. That's nice. Oh man, it's isn't meant that... to bring. It's meant to bring misfortune. <laughs> isn't that Mitsudai of origin? No, originally Raujin. Well, uh, Grand Kogan and an origin. Remember what I said about some people's blessings being curses? Yes. I feel like that might apply here. <sighs> she uh, sort of shakes her head. If someone truly believed that, they could see Hay. Hay is rather, rather talented at removing blessings. Put that in your report if you want to write anything down. <laughs> oh, yes. Make sure you put that in your notes, boss. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure to put it in duplicate in yours. <laughs> I will. Well, this has been delightful. Beretta, we should do tea sometime. Tea would sound lovely. <laughs> I, do you have my cell phone number? I don't think I do. Hello. I thought, huh, that's the funniest thing. Um, she uh, she moves in and, like, reaches out and, like, pulls out her own. It's really strange. Um, your father said that... Uh, you might have lost your cell phone or that you were out of range or something. Did you go on a road trip or something? You said something about killing ghosts on an island. Just a life-changing adventure. Nothing too major. Oh. <laughs> well, that explains why you got along so well with Elixia. She went on one as well. That's where I met her. <laughs> These two just grin at each other. You exchange numbers with Tia. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing what life is under the Tempest. She, you see the words boot heel on her, uh, on her lips, and she goes, employ. One could only be so lucky to be under the Tempest. Boot, <laughs> employ. <laughs> Treat her okay, all right? She's a delicate, noble flower. I won't. <laughs> he hasn't been. If you think she's a delicate flower, then she has you fooled. <laughs> Tia, Tia, like, looks completely taken aback for a second. You would besmirch the name of a lady? Yes. To her face, really? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Rude company you keep, Bretta. Yes. <laughs> I see. <laughs> well... I suppose I'll add this to my own personal dossier. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yes, maybe I can, uh, if I uh, encounter any uh, dangerous exorcists, I'd be more than willing to tell you about them myself as well. Hmm. Would this be a report from Dr. Barbados or Dr. Barbados of the Tempest? I, is there a difference anymore? Yes, there is. A substantial one. I, I don't know. I'll think about it. <laughs> and just because our organizations happen to be rivals as you so put doesn't mean that we can't still work together especially as such old friends of course especially to get rid of nasty ass exorcists hmm ha huh. I see you have an issue with the exorcists then eh, a little bit <laughs> well I wish you the best of luck with your displeasurable assignment then mm hmm you too she bows and slowly exits through the door. Click. So. The tall girl. The tall girl. You date? <laughs> <laughs> that was great. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Hey, am I? Where do you want to meet Sienna? I don't mind. And anywhere? Anywhere? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm, like, I'm gonna throw you anywhere then. Surprise me. I will. I will always be surprised. I don't know where anything in the city is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to surprise you in that you are going to have to deal with um modern technology slightly. Oh damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you uh you go and meet Sienna. Let me make sure this is good. Oh, I'm not going to condemn you to modern technology. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Monushi, you here? Let me see. Was that a yes? Come on. 
They said ye in the roll 20 chat. Fantastic. Okay. Ye that settles things for me. Ye ye. You guys are going to go over here. Gotta clean the sheep off the ground. That's right. Scrape that sheep up. That sunflower. You aren't here today. By the way, y'all are doing really excellent so far. Your characterization is so good. Same to you, homeboy. Yeah. <laughs> Home daddy -o. We're just trying we're just trying to provide the most divine of vibes. Yes. yes. Oh no. Oh my. <laughs> You're meeting at the cafe with no name. This is probably the best place to get in touch with Sienna. She tends to gather in this area, just yeah. ambiently bothering Nyx whatever chance she gets. She leans on the counter. So am I. It's been a while since we went on a date. What's going on? Yeah, it's just been a little bit. This is the first thing you do after you wake up? That's really flattering. It's very sweet. <laughs> But Not seriously, exactly. what's the occasion? <laughs> Not exactly the first thing, but... I have... I have concerns, worries, and thoughts. He balls up his fist. My experience with the Lord of Lanterns and the Underneath... Mm, her expression sort of falls for a second. Oh, I see. Right. Yeah. I wanted to yeah. talk to you about that anyway. Yeah. Are there any questions you want to get out of the way first? She, uh, looks. Are you feeling all right? I... I think I got a li little bit too close. Mm. When... When it was ripped away... My soul got caught up in it. Hmm. She sort of thinks on that. I can't say I 100% understand. The way we look at magic is too different, but it... If I had to put it... If it happened to me, it'd be like my consciousness was yanked away from me, so... Yeah, I, I, I guess I can see it. She kind of, like, nods. <laughs> Checking that, leaning forwards. It, it's a pain that is quite indescribable. She smiles at that. I see. Well, I'm glad you seem to be physically doing better. You're not. <laughs> you're not in a coma anymore, so that's good. <laughs> I'm used to it. Just ask Senra. <laughs> she uh, nods. We, uh, <laughs> little bastard, uh, holds out a hand, and there's, like, bite marks on it. <laughs> <laughs> Made absolutely sure you were not disturbed. Mm. I don't know, I thought we were helping, but... <laughs> Mine. <sighs> Basically, I saw into a little bit of the Lord of Lanterns past, or at least what caused their master in this whole thing. Oh. She leans forward. Ooh, so there's like a culprit. Uh, culprit, you can say it's as in much as it may be the entire city. Hold on, what? <laughs> Whatever the underneath is, whatever being is existing down there, there seems to be a... something it's trying to prepare for. If a... I have to say this, but if an exorcist or a familiar commits murder, it takes them as the price. 
she blinks. I see. Well, I guess it's good. We, I guess it's good. No murders have happened here other than the, oh God, the one the other day. She sort of relaxes back in her chair and just fluffs out. The underneath I... takes them somewhere though. Yes, from one of them, from the small snippet I saw, it's, um, he stops, uh, trying to gather his thoughts. It was, the person that it was taking seemed like they were melting, bleeding. Their very existence being dragged under. It's horrifying. Uh, this only happens if you murder someone, right? That's all I know. From what it seems like, he stops. If you ever hear anything about going, something happening with a church on a hill, do not. She, uh... Do not interact. Not yet. Okay. I'll try to stay clear of that. Um, we actually looks over to Nyx. We got some advice the other day that there was someone up there who was really interesting. He... Yeah, we were going to go see them, weren't we? Yeah, he... we sure were. <laughs> he, like, bowls up his fist and, like, you see some of the table get scratched by his nails. Yes. <laughs> I don't know where they stand yet, but they seem to be at least willing to watch a man melt. She sort of, like, her, her expression remains very serious. So, uh, stay away. It's just, uh, what's the next step? <sighs> There's many things I need to get. I need to understand more about the underneath. My experiences with it are too minimal, but... And... Well, oh, what? Well, I mean, for what it's worth, there is someone who uh, could probably be considered a murderer, <laughs> air quotes, in this very district. I think after this conversation, I'm going to kick her door down and we're going to have a word. <laughs> we'll have to see. Um, I don't know that the one. Exact... <laughs> I don't know the exact requirements. She, uh, she gets a serious look on her face again. This church on a hell. Are you going there? He holds back. I want, I want to figure out where they truly stand. I see. I'm not gonna stop you then, but if you need backup, just uh, yell real loud. <laughs> <laughs> I. I won't hesitate to ask. She, uh, she leans in. I mean, I don't have anything that'll help me get to you or anything, but the gate you're the gatekeeper's favorite, so, like, he'll probably dump me out in the area if you yell <laughs> loud enough. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you know I'm only a step away. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> These two have a fucking vibe. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he does lean back, uh, crossing his arms. The other thing I wanted to deal with was I want to contact every exorcist that I can and implore them to come up with some sort of rule set, some sort of agreement that they will not they will not kill. She gets a serious look on her face. I... I could see you giving that a shot, but, like... How are you gonna 
draw them all together and make sure that they, I guess the threat of melting is enough. Potentially she scratches the side <laughs> of her head. Well, what could go wrong with a group like that? <laughs> it's um, going to be difficult, but all I need is for them to lend my ear, uh, lend their ear. I am not going to, I'm not going to think that I'm going to be able to convince all of them or make all of them play nice. But as long as we can agree that that, that isn't an outcome we want for ourselves, maybe we can stave off whatever is being done behind the scenes. She, uh, she sort of like looks over to Nix and sort of smiles. Huh. Okay. Yeah. That doesn't sound like too bad a plan at all. Um, now we just got to get to the hard part. Uh, the part that I'm the worst at, uh, logistics. She, uh, <laughs> she puts her hands <laughs> down on the, uh, down on the table. Like, you got to think about the practical stuff. Like, where are you going to keep them? Where are you going to, and something thumps against your leg, am I? Mm-hmm. Thump. Oh. Do you have the time? What's the time? Do you know what the time is? What's the time? Mumble, mumble, mumble. Quietly <laughs> off to the side. He places his hand on uh, their, their top and, and rubs. <laughs> it's... There... She's like... Basically a gourd made out of copper with a layer of oxidizing copper on top. The inner gear is no longer moved, but she still seems to drag herself across the ground. Oh, uh, it's one of sunflowers, isn't it? <laughs> kind of points rudely. Nyx looks over the table. Oh, you need the time? I got the time. Checks her pocket. <laughs> uh, I don't got the time. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> looks up. Shift, shift, shift. Head tilts down. <laughs> Perhaps we could use the clock tower. Stops in place. Freezes. <laughs> <laughs> crawl, 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 crawl. Well, it seems like you. we have, it seems like we have a, uh, a friendly custodian here. Moves, 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 moves. Ah. Okay, well, yeah, if you want to... They seem excited. Sure, yeah. You want it, um... She, like, reaches down and... and where is it? Come on. Uh, throws you a key ring. <laughs> he grabs it. That'll open up all the doors inside. Um. Oh, give me, like, three of those keys back. That's the... A lot of these are apartment keys. <laughs> <laughs> he was already like <laughs> placed it on the table and pushed it over <laughs> towards it. Yeah, she's like, she takes a few of them back. Sorry about that. I just, you get handed a set of keys when you're made arch archmage and like, you don't know which goes where. Uh, I will be keeping this one. Uh, she holds on to a very special looking key because that's about to get me to a house that's a few folds deep. <laughs> she sort of stretches and like loosens up her back. Hey, Nix, yeah. you mind coming along for this one? Of course. Don't have any customers anyway. I couldn't think of a name today. <laughs> <laughs> she moves up in this direction. Uh, Amai gets up and goes, also, Sienna. Yeah. Come here for a second. She moves over. He gives she, her a big... She does it first. She hugs you. <laughs> yeah, he gives her a big hug. Foofs into your chest and sort of buries her face there. Well, don't I feel like a third wheel? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you come over here, too? <laughs> come on. Oh, if you insist. <laughs> <laughs> Gives him a hug. We're both going off to battles, though very different ones. Mine's very little, literal. <laughs> says, sort of growling from your chest. Yours is more um, metaphorical. Hey, uh... Yeah. If this pro person turns out to be a problem, don't get melted, all right? I won't. I can't be melted yet. <laughs> she smiles. Okay, Nyx, let's go. Of course. <laughs> These two walk towards Fumrel's shop, prepared for fucking war. Hey, Fumrel! 
<laughs> you know anything about an underneath? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, move off in this direction. This one sort of skitters expectantly behind you. And then rushes off in this direction as if to prepare. <laughs> Scoots <sighs> off. Looks like I've got no end to little helpers. <laughs> All right. Now. Hmm. He thinks. Maybe I should ask Julius Tear. <laughs> <laughs> you put that thought to the wind and let it sit. Uh, we're taking a five minute break now. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Let's boop, boop. take five. That was excellent. Time to time to use the bathroom. I get a new it's fucking better. chair. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. New please. Chair. A dumpy too Stay strong. Stay safe. Don't be too thick. Don't be too thick. thick. Too thick. I'm eating a chicken right now. Why do you edge. only eat abominations of food? What do you mean? Fucking, you eat the impossible whopper. Yeah. All from the earth. All from the earth. <laughs> yeah, it's impossible. It's impossible, bro. It's impossible. It can't be true. Let me check my Twitter and see how hard you're ratioing me right now. I got like 50 likes. Uh, I see. Uh, let's... Yeah, 57. Yeah. Damn. Bodied. You really showed me. Yep. Like, man. Never forget your place, speck of dust. Mm -hmm. Ah, speck of dust. That's what I am. I'm just a tiny little boy. Mm -hmm. Why are you hurting me? Wanna, wanna pick a fight with a little man? Gonna hurt a little yeah. man? Yes. <laughs> it's not a fight with a little man. Yeah, but yeah. Oh, Only man. violence. Too soon. Too soon. Too soon. Way, way too soon. <sighs> Monkey. I love the Barbados Beretta combo is something that I didn't know would happen. <laughs> They're horrible. <laughs> it's awful. God, dude, she's such a kiss ass. I don't know what you're talking oh. about. Oh my god, you don't know you. What what could he mean by this? I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. And then I targeted your girlfriend and you were like, oh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> no, I think it was a very deliberate exit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you date? Runs away. Coward. <laughs> <laughs> you fair maiden. I'm like, man. What a scumbag. I got you coffee and you come at my girlfriend? Yeah, I'm yeah. going to I'm gonna cut. I wrote your girlfriend down as a fucking threat. No, you didn't. You took fake notes. Yeah, I I, I read it down in my head. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm just, no, he stores it in his ass. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, dude, the last thing I need is these witches talking about my butt. <laughs> <laughs> all these, all these fucking bitches in the fucking Raj district be like, you, 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 you fucking you, you, boo, but I'm like, yeah, I'm back. I got a new chair. Look, look, Good. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's made out of metal this right. time. No, it's strong nice. enough to support your dumpy. <laughs> yeah, I hope you're right. Yeah. Oh fuck! Luckily, mm -hmm. it didn't cut me this time when it fucking exploded. Jesus Christ! Yeah. Jeez. Chairs build knives occasionally. Sometimes. Sometimes. The strongest knife, a chair. Hey man, that's why Jibo has a job. It's true. Uh -huh. It's true. Mm -hmm. Family's bit off that city. Mm -hmm. Off my butt. Off the dumpy. The off king of dumpy. The king of dump. The king of dump. Ah, oh, man, I bet that'd go over well. I'm like, Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh, the king of dumps. The king of dumps. I'm having a lot of fun. Uh, Spire. Mm-hmm. Man. How dare you not talk to Momozawa? He would have called you all a bitch. Oh, hey. don't worry. <laughs> oh, please, <laughs> please, sir. We're on our way. <laughs> We're on our way. Little, little bitches. Yeah, I want it. I I know Momozawa's gonna call me a little bitch, and I'm just like, I don't want to go to Momozawa. He's just gonna bully the fuck out of me. But I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like, I gotta go. That's the best part. Bullies everyone.
Yeah. Yes. Balance. That's why I'm, I, I'm just going to have Beretta try to talk philosophy with moments now. <laughs> Hope you like Hope you like tea. What is yeah. the self? What is our self? And I was just What like, is our self? <laughs> I, I'm the slipping into the diceys and brain set. Yeah, <laughs> man. Um, I really shifted. <laughs> that, that fucking reminds me. I, I've been trying my best not to play Persona 5 Royal. But then I heard the like final boss theme, and I'm like, now like I'm just sitting here really like it's it's hey. good. <laughs> it's it's good. I just don't hey. want to replay Persona Five again. I played it so yeah. many times. Hey man, it it feels different enough. <laughs> Try to speed run it. I yeah. could. I'm, I I'm I can do that. I'm back. Yo, Jay. Yeah. <laughs> I have a fun little suggestion. Yeah. So obviously we can choose. To meet up with each other or not yeah but how about we secretly tell you who we're going to and if we happen to meet up we meet up but oh uh, fantastic yeah yeah that's really <laughs> fun so okay so on the table right now is uh for for us obviously uh mallow yeah momozawa yes seely Yes, you've also got, um, you can, you can also just decide, fuck all of those, I want somebody else. And go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can, you can literally decide that. God, dude. Oh, fuck. I'm trying to, you know? You know is there, what? Is there anybody? Well, I mean, there's, like, some fun choices. There like, was a D20 uh, list. Every single <laughs> side of the dice had an entry on it. Yeah, like, I, like, going to speak to the gatekeeper would be fucking hilarious. <laughs> Consider, you know what? Fuck it. Let's talk to the gatekeeper. <laughs> I, mean, I know I said like, "Hey, let's play a funny little game," but like, let's talk to the gatekeeper. You're gonna talk to the gatekeeper? Yeah, let's talk to the gatekeeper uh, okay. at the at the drawbridge. Oh. Uh, am I? Where are you headed? Um. So at least you'd be walking outside of the Mirage District. Yep, yeah, we just we just canceled the game. The game uh, is working. Yeah, I, 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 I oh, no, no, I, game I can then... I can think I can think of a way to make the game work. Do you guys still want to play the game? Do we? <laughs> do you do you want to play this fun game you just made? Do, do we want do we want know. to play your fun game, Aloha? The, the, the fun game that you came up with, Jay, kind of sounds cringe. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna be completely honest with you, and I don't always agree with Aloha, but I agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with the with 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 the which part? What part? What are we doing? I agree. Uh, we're going to talk to the gatekeeper and Amaya walks out. Let's okay. do it. Yep. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. Actually, right, hold on. Decided. I can I can I'm not gonna have Amaya walk out on you with the with the gatekeeper. Yeah. I'm going to based on the direction of the conversation. I'm going to do it in order of um. Yeah, this way everybody gets what they want and we get to play Aloha's fun game. Um, <laughs> Your fun game. Uh, my fun game, yeah. Yeah, my fun my fun game that's kind of cringe. Pseudo, pseudo cringe, semi fun cringe. game. Yeah. yeah. So you guys are going to talk to the gatekeeper. Yeah. Meanwhile, Amai is going to go off and uh, talk to Seeley. And then mm -hmm. you, guys, you guys are going to catch up to yeah, Amai. Yeah, you want to go there anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys were you guys were headed there next anyway, and then uh, if we have time afterwards, we will uh, let you like either later in the afternoon or even the next day continue your rounds, and then you can play the fun game from scratch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, yes, okay. In that case, let's go to the fucking gate. I go through the supply closet, and Brett is like, "Whoa, whoa, unreal." <laughs> over here if there's any characters on this map that i need to kill uh ignore them until they die yeah, yeah. now keep in mind Breta, <laughs> what i'm about to show you shut the fuck up about okay <laughs> okay i'm perfectly capable of keeping a secret all right sure yeah. okay you where are out. we by the way <laughs> uh don't worry about it Name's not important. Hey, gatekeeper. <laughs> you say that. And, hold on. Just like you say that. <laughs> there we go. Kuchong, it goes up. No, oh, okay, good. Uh, it appears as though we've been gatekept. <laughs> <laughs> he walks over here. 
Barbados. No. You've been coming here an awful lot lately. Uh, and then looks over in unusual company. Yes, 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 yes. I understand I might be uh, breaking a rule right now, but I think it's bending a rule in the interest of both of us. So... He looks and waits for you to make your point. <laughs> my current objective in Tempest is to look into some of the troublesome exorcists coming into town. Yes. And uh, who better to know all the troublesome exorcists than the guy who gatekeeps the magical district? He... He, like, nods. Point taken. Now, I understand this is obviously a factional dispute, but I feel like you could also bend the rules a little bit, seeing that it's something that will benefit both of us. And I guess, like, help the district out mostly, you know? To what end will it assist me? Um, well... Tempest will be keeping an eye on some of the troublesome exorcists that come in and try to kill random legends. Mm. If I know who they are, then we can keep an eye on them. Don't worry, I won't be telling Tempest about the district or anything. I'm just saying, you know. Mm. You know, the kind of exorcists that... Genuinely, that, that I would mm -hmm. allow troublesome exorcists within the district. I think that... Hmm. He thinks about it. I think well, what, my, what my <laughs> boss means to say is not to doubt your ability as a gatekeeper, just that you would see the comings and goings of everybody who comes into this district that I know nothing about, and nor will I ever speak of. <laughs> <laughs> His and, gaze fixates on you, Beretta. And also, you do let troublesome people into the district. That's why I'm here, and that's why that Smoke Witch is also in. As long as they're not using the Mirage District to their own benefit, you let them in. You're just the gatekeeper. You're not the, uh... I Moral don't police. Yeah. He nods. Both of you qualify under the current rule set that I operate by. This one's more trouble than they're worth, the gatekeeper. <laughs> Me? I've never caused anyone trouble in my life. <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> I understand this. He looks over to Beretta. If this were a discussion about allowing her into the district, I believe we would need to get more in-depth with this. Mm -hmm. The concept of using this place for one's own gains is something that isn't allowed within the Mirage District proper. Mm -hmm. He looks at you, Beretta, and you feel a weight building on you, almost of quiet judgment, and then it snaps and turns back over to Barbados. That is not the subject of discussion today. Yeah, that's an issue for later. But <laughs> yes, I'm not using the Mirage District to my benefit, I'm using you to my benefit, Gatekeeper. That is acceptable. <laughs> he states <laughs> just blatantly. <laughs> yeah, Gatekeeper's a strange one. You gotta remember, to some extent, he's given human emotions that will assist him with his job. It doesn't seem like in this instance, this this sort of like wariness would assist him in this case. And as such, it does not exist within his ethereal skull. He uh, shakes his head. Yet at the same time, I couldn't give you a list of the residents of the district itself. Mm. I would propose a compromise. Oh? I could give you information on those who tried to access the district and were turned away. Hmm, that sounds like a good uh, compromise, yes. Yeah, he, uh, he, he, he nods to that. Similarly, that would enable... That would enable those that reside in the district to not face trouble when they do leave. It seems mm -hmm. like an adequate solution. That sounds like the best solution, honestly. Similarly, I expect you to not notate those who wish to, to treat this place as an oasis to hide away from the war uh, raging outside. I treat this place as an oasis because I can get away from my job here. This is why you are allowed within the district. <laughs> 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 Your qualifications are very simple, Barbados. Yep. <laughs> he looks back to Beretta. Similarly, 
this is the type of person that I would register on your list first. <laughs> oh, oh so, am I being turned away? Yes. Yup. <laughs> That's understandable. <laughs> I wouldn't want to cause anybody any trouble. <laughs> of course not. He looks at you impassively. <laughs> mm -hmm. Similarly, if you're invested in others, uh, there was a recent arrival who tried to access the district and failed. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe her name was... I apologize, it's difficult to keep names straight, especially those that I don't allow inside. Laramie Pietro. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know that person, Beretta? Uh, I can't say that I do. <laughs> I mm. see. Okay. I'd keep an eye out for her in particular. She... Just for my own, I don't know, peace of mind. Why was this person turned away? Mm. Because she wished to lie low in the Mirage District so that she might better sway the tides with her reappearance when she chose to reappear. <laughs> I, I see. <laughs> Why all Pietro's fucking like this, dude? You have no idea. <laughs> he shakes his head. Well, that does not benefit a faction in particular. It is using the Mirage District for one's own glory. A frustrating mm -hmm. sentiment. Relaxation. Withdrawal, isolation, all of these are valid reasons to be allowed into the Mirage District. However, to use it as another piece in one's own game, forum, as social they standing, say, clout. <laughs> <laughs> he nods sagely at the word clout, ah, is yes. unacceptable. Um, well, then, a question, gatekeeper. Yes. Have you deemed me unworthy of an escape? He looks at you. <laughs> Unworthy of peace of mind. Hmm. I've deemed you as trouble. But you let this trouble in. <laughs> he looks over to Barbados and, like, stares at him. Today, he's decided to be trouble in a way that is uncharacteristic of him. Normally, this man is languid. Languid, languid. What does that mean? What does that mean? I have a question. I, I have another thing. <laughs> he, he hangs his head. It means he has the demeanor of um. Hmm. Like, like, he points and snaps his fingers, and there is a there is a cat lazing on a wall up there. Cat. That oh. cat. It arrives every day, stands, stares, and waits, and does little else. It seems to enjoy this area, nothing more. He turns back. Oh. He is unusually motivated today. Perhaps you were supplying this for him. Uh, don't, don't. don't. <laughs> Look, I'm just doing a job. <laughs> and I'm just here to assist with the job. That's yeah. precisely why neither of you will be allowed in right now. Oh. <laughs> right now doesn't sound definitive. I'm speaking mostly to him. <laughs> He's just looking at Barbados. Like, what? You know, when most people don't don't got me, I know gatekeepers. Uh, <laughs> always got my stash. <laughs> he uh, shakes his head. And that is definitionally untrue. <laughs> It could be true, though. We could be best of friends. I could I could get you something outside of the Mirage District if you want. I can bring you food if you do eat. Do you eat? He shakes his head no. Do you want to eat? <laughs> he genuinely pauses and thinks about that for a while. Mm -hmm. Beretta actually reaches into her coat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she takes a step forward, <laughs> reaching out over the water. And she retrieves the tea that she had offered <laughs> earlier. Well, I don't expect this to get me in, but uh, I wouldn't want it to go to waste. And you seem like you're having a day. He reaches over and receives it. 
sits back, looks at Barbados. What I desire is more complicated than food or tea, but I'll oblige you just the same. <laughs> Presses tea to face. <laughs> <laughs> Does his lips even move? No. <laughs> it just slides down the front of his face. Mm, delicious. It is good tea. This oh. man cannot taste. <laughs> He's going through the motions. Mm, mm. Huh. You Where know, I... did you send Laramie Pietro? <laughs> she tried to access from, I believe, a sewer in Seaside. <laughs> a sewer. I sent her to, I sent her to the abandoned area beneath the remains of, she, he, like he's trailing off, the remains of the mall, I believe. Hmm, okay. She may be hiding in that abandoned district. No, oh, okay. That's okay. good information. <laughs> She's lurking in the boss area. <laughs> <laughs> Fog gate goes down. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other individuals you turned away recently? He, uh, oh god, he's gotta think about that. Um, yes, uh, a few actually. More recently, I've had to turn away Betel Illman. Oh. His affiliation with the university runs deeper than I anticipated. He'll be oh. allowed back in given time, but for now, he's he's been instructed to wait outside. No. Oh. I'm starting to understand your qualifications, gatekeeper. <laughs> he nods. Others that have tried to access... Um... I believe... A one Julius Tier wanted access to the district, but said no. something so ludicrous that I threw him to the far sides of the city. That checks out. <laughs> All right, so Laramie Pietro, Betel Illman, and a Tier. Um, as well as, um, he's thinking relatively hard. Momozawa the Terrible passed by the gate, but chose not to pass through. I am no. unsure of if I will allow him into the district or not. Well, that person is on our list. We could always talk to them ourselves and then inform you. <laughs> Do you wish to know his current location? That would be helpful, yes. He has a, a section of land protected by some small amount of enchantments to direct common sight away. A similar type of enchantment that we place upon this district. Oh. It sure says something about the state of my heart that you would consider whether or not to let somebody in known as the terrible and said <laughs> no to me so quickly. <laughs> he nods. <laughs> That's it. He just he just nods like yes. <laughs> Gatekeeper is nothing but nods. <laughs> um in order to access where Momozawa the Terrible is currently camped, head north along the peninsula from the uh, Tide headquarters. You'll pass through a small glade and arrive where he set up his camp. Okay. That's good. Okay, Gatekeeper. <laughs> Pleasure talking to you as always. Thank you for the help. It was nice meeting you. Please enjoy the tea. He, he nods and sort of, like, continues, uh, he nods and continues watching, uh, Barbados, mm -hmm. this, like, you, you get the feeling of that to some extent you fulfilled whatever need that the gatekeeper had, even more so than the tea, and he just seems to sit there content. Yep. <laughs> well... Thank you, as always. Hopefully we get to talk again soon. Hopefully I don't, uh, I don't know, turn biased or something and start using the Mirage District for evil or something. Mm. May your heart remain unclouded. <laughs> Truly, you are more complex than tea, boss. <laughs> the gatekeeper is one of the best features of this district. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, am I. You, uh... <clears throat> you 
start walking. And as you go, you wind up crossing the bridge, the water bubbling beneath you. A cloud starts to hang over the area as you travel towards the old noble district. Once completely abandoned, it's now... It's now the home to something else. You walk deeper... Deeper into the woods as... The air seems to hang heavy and you feel the moisture starting to bubble around you. There's a storm coming. Drive. Uh, he, he calls Senra. Yeah. To, to keep him grounded. Yeah. <laughs> boom, 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 pop. I don't like this. Why is it always bad omens with you? <laughs> he, like, <laughs> sweeps around every single time. It's, oh, the tea leaves turned up strange. Oh, I broke a plate. Oh, the storm of the century is hanging over our heads. <laughs> I'm a child of bad luck, apparently. <laughs> what does that make me? <laughs> <laughs> A friend of bad luck. <laughs> he sticks his chin up proudly like, I will accept this. <laughs> you walk. And this this area has taken on a sort of new unlife to you. Um, this area always felt quiet, sleepy, but the nearby overgrown graves and the crunching leaves beneath your feet almost belie a hidden life. As you look around, you're almost certain you see eyes glaring at you from the dark beneath those sets of leaves. But as you blink, another trick of the light. He stops for a second, um, and I wanna, I wanna, I wanna give him a, a little bit of a vibe check. Oh yeah, um, give me a vibe check. But I also wanna feel. Uh, I wanna. I want to use his his magic to see if he can get a read on the area how how the world feels about Ooh. this <laughs> church. <laughs> okay, let's do a Give me a roll to yeah. Oh god! Oh, oh god! Am I? Uh, I know what that crit fail means. It's <laughs> it's a stupid one because like. You're like, I'm going to get a vibe check of this place. You obviously don't get a read of the information, but like, how do you fuck up a vibe check really bad becomes a question, but uh, I know how. Mm -hmm. um, it's as you're, as you're sort of like, okay, let's get a read of what's going on here. There is a crash and the rain starts coming down. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just like, ugh. Oh. Truly <sighs> bad luck. <laughs> oh my, just sort of, he doesn't even like, his face drops, but his, his body, his body language doesn't. I should have expected this. <laughs> Hold on, I've got to, I've got to grab my ambience really fast. We need, we need the proper, uh, storm noises. So, go down here. Just chill in the vibes for a sec. Yeah. See how he's feeling. Ah, ah yes, he's red. <laughs> <laughs> ah, beautiful. Explain to me how he's feeling in this exact moment. He is at this moment he so he's feeling like a little bit uh frustrated at the weather yeah. but i think that's sort of uh his along with the vibe check i think he's just prepared and open to whatever weird shit is happening <laughs> like he is expecting things that he cannot understand. Yeah. There we go. You get your, you get your actual storm SFX. 
Yes. Ah, oh, nice. Okay. And with that, you walk towards the church. Yeah. Nothing but the sounds of the rain accompanying you as you go. You, you wind up sort of clearing the threshold, and you notice there's no lights on, really, inside. Like, it looks abandoned. This place looks abandoned. Senra clings and, like, uses your hair as an umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> And he looks over at Sandra and goes, it's been a while since we've been caught in the rain. Mm, yeah, normally we're better at predicting the weather, but at the same time, ah, <laughs> the, the city's so covered we could just hide somewhere usually. Mm. As you cross the threshold, you see the lights flare on inside as if responding to you. He raises an eyebrow, but does it, his stride doesn't stop. Continue going on. And you, uh, you move towards the church. And as you do, you finally walk up. You place your hand on the door. And with a loud... Argh! You force it open, and you come in out of the rain. Doink, doink, doink. It's quiet and almost empty in here. Everything has dyed a very nice shade of pink. <laughs> he sort of walks in dripping. <laughs> <laughs> Just sort of looks. Eh, it should be fine to get this place a little wet. <laughs> <laughs> you say as a voice, of course, calls out from the other side. Oh, excuse me. Welcome back to the, uh, welcome back to my establishment of my moral eye. She moves downstairs. Oh, but wait, this is your first time entering here, isn't it? Oh, my scowls. <laughs> hmm. She, uh, she gets a grin on her face again. You know the interior of this church because you saw it in a memory, not because you've come in here before. Yeah. Senra clings to your shoulder for a second as she takes a step forward. Wow. What can I help you with today? Have you come to pray? I have not come to pray. I've came, come to have a di discussion. Her, her face sort of contorts slightly, turning mischievous for a moment. Oh, <laughs> what about? about what lies below and where you stand. <laughs> she, uh, her face splits into a smile. Oh, what a clever turn of phrase, that. Her, uh, she, she sort of looks at you. Where we stand. Hmm. She shakes her head. I assume based on your phrasing, you're talking about the underneath. I am. In all of my research, I only thought something existed below. I knew of the underneath, but not of a being. Hmm. Her, uh, her expression changes again. Oh, how very shocking. There's not just one being living down there. There's a multitude of them. She walks back over and starts lighting the candles. I know of this too, but it seems you have a relationship with one that does not just seem to be passing fancy. <laughs> she, uh, oh boy. She, uh, lights the candle and takes a step backwards. Well, first I'll answer exactly where we stand. She points back over to the doorway. This is the very edge of city limits, and the very edge of where the underneath exists. 
this church is positioned precariously on the edge of something far grander for most people to perceive. <laughs> her, her mouth splits open. Oh, I have a good comparison. Imagine, imagine you're on an island. Now, unless you saw the ocean, where it rimmed the edges of your small world, you would never know that it was properly an island. While you sit within the bounds of Indigo itself, the underneath remains imperceptible. It runs beneath the city, and it's only in places like this can it truly be felt, perceived. We can view it from the side to some extent. It's not just the ground we walk on. We can see the edge of the ocean and what lies beyond. She walks forward and motions back over to the old noble district. That area over there, the one I watch over, that area is spared the gaze of those who watch from below. It's why I offer succor and seclusion to those who need it. Hmm. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> he moves around <laughs> and goes I felt its existence once I entered Indigo well that's good at the very least you're living up to your name <laughs> her expression gets serious again Mm, I have a name. Am mm. I moral eye? Yes. You're storied enough. She says those words and you feel something. <laughs> you feel like you're being watched right now. Oh. <laughs> it hangs in the air around you, but those eyes of hers seem to punch straight into your core. And she's going to roll to die. Oh, boy! This one. <laughs> <laughs> and oh. the aura in the room changes along with Seely. From what I recall, you've traveled the majority of this continent to the far south, correct? Sagaris means to die. You've been spending some time in Raji. Mm -hmm. You carried, carried back a higher tier magical artifact, people believed. Some sort of sentient talking doll. It turned out it was a little more than a man wrapped up to look like a mummy. <laughs> 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 rumors, and especially separating the rumors related to you from the truth, has been quite frustrating. I suppose that is the unfortunate burden that all those that are caught up in that man's wake bear. Mm -hmm. She very notably glares at you with the mention of that man. That can only mean one thing. A certain core spirit stabilizing friend <laughs> who seems to obscure the truth wherever he goes. <laughs> yeah. How um, my looks around and goes, I take pride in keeping my own secrets. Hmm. Splits. Well, you've entered my church and you have demanded a few of mine. So, allow me to make one thing abundantly clear. I'm currently bound under an oath. An oath of my own enforcement. I am an adjudicator. I make laws with my magic and I have to abide by them the same as others. Violation is usually met with the pain of death. <laughs> Her face splits open in a big <laughs> smile. So, I need you to understand something. The existence of the underneath and those that lurk beneath. That, that is a pact that I've signed. I suppose you could call it, to some extent, a non-disclosure agreement. Her face sort of splits open. But at the same time, it's not something so absolute or callous. I can speak relatively candidly. Just understand that my silence doesn't necessarily belie ignorance. Instead, I'm choosing my words relatively carefully. Please, take a seat. <sighs> <laughs> 
<laughs> he walks over and takes a seat. <laughs> so, what questions do you have for me? Exactly who is aspiring to sink the city into the great below? Something to that effect? That can be assumed. <laughs> what I'm asking with is, why are you complicit in it? She, uh, her expression sort of just goes static. Hmm. If you believe I'm complicit in it, perhaps that's the correct read. Hmm. It's something that she, it seems like she hadn't even properly considered. <laughs> hmm. My job is to observe and cast judgment when it's called for. She's going to doink, doink, doink. Ah. Oh, no. Oh. Hmm. Perhaps... Ah. This isn't the best place for seating. Perhaps we should head upstairs. I have a tea set. Perhaps. She stands and she starts to walk. No, my job, the reason that I'm here, is to make sure that a proper judgment is rendered when all things are said and done. As such, I swore a simple oath that I would stand by and observe and wait until the proper moment to fully throw my hat in the ring, I suppose. By that point, it will be too late. Gaze hmm. casts back over. Oh, I see what you're saying. Hmm. You're worried about the influence of those that would wish to do the citizens of the city harm. I worry about it doing harm to anyone hmm. and a strange specification normal people wouldn't go out of their way to change it from citizens to people why why the effort because everybody deserves to live <laughs> from animals to legends to the citizens. She, oh boy. Her grin turns relatively wicked at that mention. And uh, she she seems to keep that to herself, but she notes, she notes your determination as you head upstairs and you, uh, you move <laughs> into a very shabby upper floor. <laughs> it's, fucking miserable up here and she sort of puts her hand to the door and uh like gestures through well come on in Sunra's like this place gives me the creeps and oddly enough it reminds me of home <laughs> you open the door and you walk in and the result of that blue roll as she sits across the way, you notice something in the dark, and Seely points to it. If you could draw your attention that way. <laughs> her bones on the ground crossed, and she goes, So, welcome to my upstairs. Do you enjoy my trombone? I will see. I will. I will immediately roll to do. I will to see. See. Every single one of Seely's jokes needs to be met by silence and okay. Let's, let's roll. Uh, he he just goes. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> sits down. He like he like smiles but sits down. <laughs> you simply state, I get it, and Celie's expression turns deeply considerate at that. <laughs> Perhaps I need to adjust the delivery. That worked yesterday. Maybe using the same joke twice. <laughs> she starts to think to herself very deeply about all of this. 
I apologize. I live around a bunch of clowns. <laughs> oh, I'd love to meet them. <laughs> she says no hint of malice in her voice. He goes, well, if I feel more comfortable around you, perhaps. Now that I've lightened the mood, she says as if she accomplished something. <laughs> she, uh, she does, she does pour you some tea. Emma and sits back down. Your consideration, I suppose your consideration for the future, in action. I think you've correctly determined the issue of this city. Paralysis, gridlock, until it is all significantly too late for anyone to take meaningful action. She drums her fingers on the uh, table. The judgment that I have to render is whether or not that is the just course of action. She leans in. If you're talking about personal justice, perhaps. Hmm. She, uh... She sort of nods. My job, where I'm from, was when two people would get into a conflict, I would hear both of their sides. Of, I'd hear both sides of the story. I would factor in my own, draw as much information as I could, and then I would cast judgment on one of them. If it was something insignificant, I had to pay it the same amount of mind as if it were a murder or some other crime. Simply put, my judgment must contain as much weight as possible. She relaxes. Justice as it exists is something that I have to discover in real time. Now, I believe you've come to me for a reason. Is it related to the case of the Lord of Lanterns? He... Once again, leans against the table. It's part of it. She, uh, she, uh, sort of settles. That case has yet to be settled. As such, I can't properly cast judgment yet. But if you wish to review the facts with me, I'm more than willing. <sighs> and what are these facts? She, uh, she leans in. First of all, the arrival of one Satara and the Exorcist in our, in this city. Her face cracks into a smile. Satara, from what I've been able to learn, is an exorcist that worked on boats primarily was used to working in enclosed environments. Believe it or not, ships have a tendency to take on rather foul creatures. As they sail across the world, there are two points of escape. The ocean around, or the sailors that the boats carry on their backs. Possession is common. Seaborne exorcists are their own breed, I suppose. She drums her fingers on the counter. As such, Sataran found himself a tidy method of cleaning up various issues. He would summon for himself a legion based on a Mitsudain legend, a relatively new one, its power limited. It was assigned a simple task of purifying an area. I believe he intended to make the old noble district his base. Her expression falls static. I provided him with land and a warning. If you wish to stay away from the city's judgment and justice, he would remain in that district to himself. <laughs> That's my role of overseer of the district. Call that a secondary role to being justice. Her expression darkens again for a moment. <laughs> but it seems that he encountered a certain individual. She slides a blade across the table, a third one of those knives. <sighs> Am my, am my, uh, composure shifts once again. 
It seems you have a displeasure for this blade. I understand why. A simple cut from this will carve away and away and away until nothing remains. Oh, how delightful though. You're shielding your familiar. Her, her expression gets very intent on you <laughs> and you feel those eyes set in. Don't you know, if this knife cuts you as well, you'll bleed away till there's nothing left. Same, same as your friend. Both of you should be equally afraid. She leans back. <laughs> I have an additional piece of evidence <laughs> related to you, Amai Morali. <laughs> she seems to note that physical reaction. And then I'll draw my conclusion at the end of this discussion, however. She leans forward again. This individual and the Lord of Lanterns struck each other fatally. One was lucky enough to find a sympathetic mage who actually brought the individual and the bearer of this, uh, this knife to me to convalesce. I've been tending to him ever since. She uh, taps the knife. The other party was less lucky. This knife struck deep and through a hole in its soul, both it and its master were struck with an affliction a hunger, endless. In order to stave off the corrosive power of the knife, they had to consume and consume and consume to offer up sacrifices so that they in turn would not be consumed. Now, I draw myself to the interesting part. That creature, the Lord of Lanterns, it was a long and snake-like beast. Its tail was firmly set in the old noble district, and it would peek its head into the city at large. I believe it swallowed up two people from that Mirage district, she says, snapping her fingers, and dragged them to the old noble district last night. Oh, don't worry. I took good care of them. <laughs> He raises an eyebrow, but <laughs> just sort of leans back. <laughs> and it was around that time that the Lord of Lantern's master came to beg me for some sort of aid. And her expression simply goes static again. As he approached, he begged for his life. So Taran believed that I'd betrayed him, when in fact, it seems like his method of exorcism was crude in itself. He betrayed himself with his methods. And he failed to follow my one warning. The old noble district was to be his cradle. If he would kill others and drain their essence, that was a place that he could hide away from the city's wrath. Yet he chose to place his, ed, uh, his foot on the edge of that plate, the edge of the underneath, in order to ask me for help, something that I can't offer. <laughs> and then she gets an interesting expression on her face. And in that moment, I found myself emotionally challenged. As he moved towards me, I had to consider a few things. One, his role, two, his judgment, and three, what it meant for him. The final conclusion was, Dear Sitaran and the Lord of Lantern's story is not over yet. <laughs> and vindictively, cruelly, I sent them to the next stage of their journey. She states, looking at you <laughs> with eyes that reflect no light. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't seem impartial to me. Hmm. Her expression sort of fades back to neutral. What would you have done in my situation? I would have reached out a hand. She considers this. And now, if I'm going to draw my conclusion about you or my moral eye, I believe truly and utterly. You are the type of person who will be an enemy of this city. She states it very bluntly. 
your care and compassion. It doesn't align with the city's values. You see, even before this situation with the exorcists, the rule of none shall murder in the city of Indigo was held in place since the empty night. She folds her hands. The various occupying factions are aware of this rule and have instructed their soldiers to not kill, to never kill, to do anything short of it, but to never intentionally take a life. That's why no serious crime has happened. She folds in, uh, she folds her hands. That was a decree set by the city, an absolute rule of this place that none could go against. And yet, you would show compassion for those same murderers. You would defy the law of this place. Do not mistake my compassion for forgiveness. Hmm. <laughs> Her expression changes at that word. The big smile. Well, then I have to ask, what is your intention? For somebody to answer for the things they must, they have done, they must be alive to learn. She, she nods. Yes. Another thing. She sits back. The city is kind. It does not kill. She, uh, drums her hands on the, uh, table. This underneath. Would you like to go there? She smiles. <sighs> I would like to experience it. Your expression changes. Well, that's good. I'm uncertain of how to get there, though. <laughs> in, in fact, I have some methods. She, uh, she, she sort of closes her eyes. I believe in that case, I was worried. At first. At first, I thought you would be my bitter enemy. But it seems like some part of us is similar after all. <laughs> she looks at you. Still no light behind those eyes. Do not mistake. Once again, I don't hate you. But you are the type of person that I dislike the most. <laughs> Her expression sort of changes. I wonder if I feel the same. She's going to roll to die. <laughs> oh. God, why, Seely? Hmm. A curious thing. Well, I suppose this must be the type of person that I am. Because you're the type of person I find most interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Her eyes glint open. I'm curious. Because you're drawn by, the, drawn by the same impure impulse as me. She leans forward. You have to know before you act. She drums her hands on the counter. Pure beings, I believe, act on a mixture of instinct and ideal. However, it's those who exist on a higher plane that have to see all sides first and then call their own judgment. She looks at you dead in the eyes. Your own consideration, your knowledge, and what you seek to learn here. I want to know what'll win out, that desire or your conscience, what will survive in the end. And her face splits open into another big old smile. Who will win? You or this city? He... He thinks and ponders. You see... I don't believe those parts of me are separate. All of it is a home. Each of these parts... Giving me guidance. The city is not my enemy.
the underneath this. Her expression sort of falls. Maybe I'll consider that. Hmm. He uh, looks over. Tell me then, what do you see in this city overall? It'll be useful for my report at the very least someday. I see. He pauses, oh. holding onto Senra. I see the broad spectrum of emotion. I see hate mixed with love. I see friendship mixed with rivalry. I see contradiction. Because that is to be alive. For these things to exist in the same place, it's the most human thing that could ever be. Her expression falls again. Human, factoring in people outside the citizens. Animals, legend. Yes. All those feed into this contradiction. All of them. Hmm. <laughs> she lets out a laugh. <laughs> and then relaxes back. <laughs> I take back what I said earlier. Yes. You're the type of person that I find most distasteful. <laughs> Her expression darkens again. At first, I thought you were simply curious, but you seem like the type that would reach the finish line and then declare the entire journey there to be, well, some sort of big contradictory mess. I'm hoping for a clean solution at the end of this. I hope you understand. <laughs> it is never clean. Interacting with this world is like trying to run your hand across ink paper. Hmm. It will bleed, it will blot. But the creation that you come up with afterwards might just be the most beautiful thing. Hmm. She, uh, she reflects on these words. Well, match to my personal philosophy, though my professional is different. Well, I wish you the best of luck. She sort of relaxes back in her seat. If you're interested in reaching the underneath, I'm certain there are a wide variety of people in this city who can help you. If you're interested in avoiding the conditions of it, I can advise you, legally. <laughs> <laughs> However, at the same time, I believe it would be useful to know what you're up against. It would. At no point was I told to not disclose the name of your enemy. She sits down and sort of kneels, scrunches her legs up. The creature currently manipulating the underneath. And the one who is orchestrating this entire... She stops, and then her face splits. Oh. Another thing I can't get into. Frustrating. Nice I apologize. Hmm. Red tape. She shakes her head. <laughs> the creature that is your enemy. Its name is Aporia. Once a god of bonds. It's now the god of the underneath. She, uh, she looks at you. I've contact, I've contacted him a few times. <laughs> Believe it or not, he frequents this church. How wonderful. <laughs> it's nice to have one, um, one devout. <laughs> she, uh, she looks across. Similarly. The case of Soteran and the Lord of Lanterns. They've been submerged in the underneath itself. Where, I'm not entirely sure. But while they're there, they will not bleed out, nor will they kill again. Quite literally, they're held in stasis. If you wish to speak to either of them, you simply must find the way in. 
Ah. Hmm. And again, with your personality, disposition, etc., I believe even if you stand still, the path to the underneath will find its way to you. After all, Aporia wants to settle things with the exorcists here. You all are in grave danger. <laughs> Technically, so am I. But I'm not worried about me. Not worried about yourself. She shakes her head. So then long I'll as worry. I so long oh. as I abide by my own laws, others do as well. Mm -hmm. Then I'll worry about you for you. <laughs> Her expression goes straight. I'm going to have to ask you what you mean by that. And then <laughs> you hear the door crack open downstairs and hold on, let me just doink. <laughs> you hear the door crack open downstairs and she's like, oh, hold on a second. It appears someone else is visiting. Moves over and outdoor center's like, <sighs> wow, uh, good job. <laughs> <laughs> he just sort of like just sort of slumps I don't know if I did a good job <laughs> I how do I put this you sounded like a hero <laughs> no I'm not a hero <laughs> Sunra shrugs I mean if you're not then who is many many others Give yourself some credit. Give me some credit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you all the credit you want. <laughs> Senra puffs up to large size. Do you follow behind Seely or do you simply stay behind? I think he, he yeah, after he, they're done, he follows behind. Oh boy. Okay. You, um. Oh boy. No, not this one. I'm gonna do this one. And grab. <clears throat> no, no, it's gonna be this one. Okay. Gotta grab a character that I didn't expect. Oh. It's funny, am I? You take a sec, so you don't catch the beginning of the conversation. All you get is, um, sort of like an eventual um, snatch of discussion as you head downstairs. This is what you see. I'll spawn you when you get downstairs. Mm -hmm. Something worked its way into the church. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> he sort of leans down. What's the time? Do you have the time? What's the time? Do you have the time? Seely sort of leans down. Oh, I see. Hmm. She almost just palms this creature and picks it up and starts to, like, inspect it. Hmm. You're a rather old one, aren't you? She looks closely. Oh. <laughs> I see. That part's missing, then, huh? She puts... This creature back down on the ground. And am I, you head downstairs. Oh. <laughs> oh. What are you... How oh. did you get here? A friend of yours. Jack flails back and forth. Little appendages sort of like hanging in the air. He quickly leans down and <laughs> <laughs> looks at Jack. <laughs> Is there something you needed from me? Jack wiggles and, like, gesticulates at you. This one's you looking could... for their missing piece. And uh -huh. judging by this, they've been looking for quite some time. Yes. Seely looks at you dead in the eyes of I. And you feel those, that pressure on you build again. You feel like she's watching you, weighing you. It feels like, I don't know how to put this. 
you remember making Senra. You remember the process that it took to create Senra. And you remember what it felt like to hold a soul in your hands and twist. That's what being looked at by Seely feels like. <laughs> oh, she Ow. will not stop rolling this. <laughs> she looks at you and she looks down at Jack and goes, Perhaps I can count on your judgment in this case, then. She takes a step forward, invading your personal space, and uh, she looks at you. So, if I knew, if I knew where this person's missing part was, would it be better for me to tell her or keep that information to myself. Hmm. Do you want the full details of the case? <laughs> Her face <laughs> splits back into a somewhat mean smile. He holds that, he grabs that to a hand and he says, please. She, uh, she looks down at Jack. Well, this creature, this is a living bit of magic. She sort of stares a little bit more closely. This copper outer shell is quite literally a physical object. It's almost comparable to the shell of a hermit crab. Contained within is a mixture of gears and mechanisms meant to keep a great structure powered. If I had to guess, that clock tower I see in the middle of town. She taps Jack on the head and Jack, do you know what the time is? What's the time? <laughs> again and again. And she sort of smiles at that. But it appears as if a section of this creature has gone missing. It's just a mess of gears at this point. There's no focusing aspect. Oh, what does it take to wind a clock? A key, of course. <laughs> she tilts her head back over to a lie. Mm -hmm. Luckily, due to my line of work, finding things, information, that's my specialty. Finding a 500-year-old key with this copper design shouldn't be unreasonably hard for my talents. So, I'm going to offer you a decision at this point. You now know a part of this creature is missing. You could attempt to reforge it yourself. Perhaps fill the gap on your own. Or you can seek out what it lost to try to restore it to the way it was. Ultimately, it's up to you how you decide to proceed. What do you believe is the kinder option? What do you believe is the more correct? You could determine this creature's happiness right now. Or you can enable it to determine its own. Hmm. He looks down at uh, Jack uh, and reaches out, uh, and he's going to uh, try and use his magic to uh, see what Jack wants. Oh, excellent. <laughs> How are you feeling about this, am I? Hmm. I think... I think he's... He's got a little bit uh, <laughs> of his pride on the line. <laughs> <laughs> so, give me a roll to do now. Okay. Okay, time to do something I didn't expect to do. Uh, give me a sec. Doink, doink, doink. Oh, God. Time to make myself sad. Here we go. Pause the rain. You reach out and you try to connect with Jack, this tiny broken thing. 
Oh, yeah, no, this'll do. Okay, so, as you sync up with uh, Jack's vision, you you look back through time, and you can feel someone coming with you. Those eyes never left you, never left <sighs> your soul. So it's, it's coming with, but, um, well, that's not, that's not your real problem right now. Um, <laughs> let me do uh, this one. You, uh, Amaya, you look back on a different time. As this thing looks up at you, you see yourself reflected in her eyes. And you see, you see what she sees in you. Which is not Amaya Morali, but someone else. You stand at a bridge. In this dream... You're the one who created the Mirage District in ages past. You're the one who wrote the last word, and you're the one who erected that clock tower. This is how Jack sees you, to some extent. Mm -hmm. A being of authority, one that towers over you. <laughs> the gatekeeper stands in front of you, somehow his words resounding a little more clearly than Jack's at the moment. And am I, you hear the response and the pressure and the upsetting amount of character that resounds through his voice. So, basically we're just a worm that extends ourselves through the city at large. It's a frustrating concept, Master. Seriously, we're here to hide away in our little hidden tower, our clubhouse. We could easily lay waste to the rest of the city. <laughs> Am I, you feel those words sort of bounce off the side of your head. Takes a step forward. The puppet master immediately to your left speaks up. Now, now, we're constructing this place specifically for mages to get away too. Sure, we're a guild, but at the same time, we're not tyrants or anything of the sort. All of this is built specifically so that we can thrive here. After all, sort of shoves the gate uh, keeper to the side. We've made you our precious familiars here to make sure our legacy endures. The puppet runs her hand along the top of Jack's head, and you feel a moment of pure bliss run through the creature, the dream itself. The gatekeeper looks over at you. Hmm, kind of upsetting. I feel like I got the raw end of this bargain. Why couldn't I have a more responsible master? Seriously, shape up. <laughs> he checks you in the side. <laughs> oh my, that shock travels through your entire body. <laughs> and you, uh, you kind of remember it. You remember it even though it never happened to you. A district tucked away from time and space and... You feel all that remains. A legacy of isolation. And a legacy of an oasis that was meant to be a break for others. And, am I, you feel your own body dissipate from this dream. Along mm -hmm. with the Puppet Master. Time passed, and all that was left behind were... Those legends meant to maintain the district, the clock tower, those old custodians looking for old flames, remnants of the people who once came before. You feel exactly how broken these people are. And you remember back to just earlier, a feeling on the side of that clock tower as the gatekeeper leapt off and into the city below, proper, disappearing onto that horizon. You get the feeling that, for a moment, you felt what it was like to have someone stand at his side again, even if it would only last for a century or two. Mm -hmm. Kind of sad and lonely thing. It spreads out, and you feel more of the gear shatter. Jack's core, the very core of this clock tower, is broken. It's missing. Because at the same time, the exact reason why this clock tower existed has been missing. It's been missing for 500 years. You come to a realization. Jack doesn't know what she wants. What she wants died 500 years ago. It's completely gone. 
The call at this point of my is yours. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to drop you back <laughs> in the church. Amai shifts his hand from reaching out to just patting Jack on the head. You have a lot of history with you, don't you? Do you have the time? What's the time? I think it's time for us to complete you. <laughs> and to bring a little heart back to the Mir Mirage District. <laughs> Am I? But... What's the next step? <sighs> So, hmm, <laughs> my thought process right now is that he doesn't want to be the piece that completes Jack Ooh. right now. Because, like, uh, like, um, the gatekeeper and things like that, once he moves on, that'll mean that it'll, it is empty once again. The pot is lost. So I think he wants to forge a new part, a part that is the Mirage District itself, so that they will always have a place. Hmm. Amai, you set to work on this. You're going to make something new in this case. You're not going to bind Jack to your soul. The Winder of Keys will not become one with you. However, in this case, you're going to create a new key in the process. That's going to take some time. And in doing so, Jack will remain incomplete for a bit. But at the very least, you're confident that you're moving towards a conclusion. Mm -hmm. You decide on this quietly. Celie pinches her eyes shut. I see. Hmm. Well, you consulted the, the creature herself and found yourself your own path. Fascinating. Yes. Hmm. She, uh, her, her face splits open into a slight smile. I have to admit, there is a certain novelty in coming up with a judgment or a course of action that has nothing to do with what was directly provided, but instead creating your own path forwards. She, uh, looks across. Earlier, you said you would have reached your hand out to the person who vanished over there. I would not. <laughs> I am not a participant in this. The best that I could do was stomp his hand into oblivion so that he could move on and stop dirtying my church faster. <laughs> she shakes her head, though. He scowls. <laughs> but at the same time, I think I understand. Hmm. She, uh, she pinches her eyes shut and looks down at this little creature. Were it up to me, I would have come up with a solution that either bound this creature to myself. Or, <laughs> more likely... I would have pointed her in the direction of those that defiled the tower to begin with. That missing part, the part that died, just the same, it's still a physical component and can be replaced. She pinches her eyes shut. With that information, Jack could easily go repair herself and find her own destiny. Hm. Her own reason for being. And then she looks over to you, am I? But at the same time, you introduced yourself as a third party. And yet still... You didn't bind her to you. <sighs> Interesting. <laughs> he... He goes... I could have. And I'm sure Jack would have appreciated it. But... I don't think that's... Hmm. There's something more. Something more there. Something more than just finding a piece of yourself. Because I feel like you can do that anywhere. Hmm. Adversity isn't just a single road. I feel like with this, Jack can at least find themselves in others. Oof. <laughs> she, you say that to her. She blinks. 
I, I did that once when I was younger. It's not a worldview I've ever considered. Hmm. I used to travel when I was young, once my mother disappeared. <laughs> I was a different person back then. I didn't know many people. And the people I did know, he grumbles. It's part of the reason why I dislike that part of you. Her eyes been shut again. I see. But interacting with others, going around, I saw the best of the world and the worst of the world. And in myself, I saw what I reflected. And that became me. Ah, I think I see now. Her expression darkens. I'm a step behind you then. It's never too late. <laughs> sure, her expression lightens up. That's fully my intent. I wish to see the content of my own soul. Hmm. But I still have plenty of awful people and plenty of good people to learn about before then. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, she sort of smiles. Well, I'll leave the rest of this case in your hands then. Mm -hmm. After all, <sighs> I have to greet our other guests. Walk, 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 walk. Hey, uh, hey, Bretta. <laughs> Bretta. Yeah. Hey, Bretta and Barbados. Oh, it's raining so fucking hard. It's raining so hard, you guys. You've been. Don't you like this, the rain, boss? This no. Sucks. <laughs> Give me your jacket. <laughs> I'm gonna. Here. I'm gonna put you. Nope, those ones aren't here. Down over in this direction. I've uh, commanded Bretta to give me Bretta's jacket to cover myself up so I do not get wet. <laughs> Does she do it? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what being a kiss ass is gonna get you wet in the middle of the woods going to a spooky church. Come on, hurry up the pace. Actually, one of the most meaningful experiences of my life was wet in the middle of the woods. What? <laughs> Hey, uh, hey, Beretta. Mm hmm. Roll to die for me in a minus oh, five. <laughs> <laughs> I love the rumor system. <laughs> it's my favorite thing. <laughs> so, why is this happening? Uh, uh, because, uh. It reminds her of Noctua. <laughs> uh. Brenna, Brennan sure did said a thing that said uh, anything that makes uh, reminds Brenna of Noctua is going to make her feel like crying. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Are you crying? No, it's just raining. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, man. Creepy, wo creepy church in the woods. This is going to be great. It feels like an adventure. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. This is the most I've been out for a while. Did you ever expect that you would be in a place like this? Uh, <laughs> here with you, soaking wet, uh, scared for my life? No, not at all. Oh, uh, what makes you scared for your life, boss? Uh, creepy churches. Religion that kind specifically. of. Uh, religion kind of creeps me out. <laughs> oh, let's explore that. <laughs> Uh, Why are you walking so fast? You have a cover. I don't have a cover. Yeah, but this cover is only going to be so good for so long. It's starting to soak through. Uh, yeah, it, it's a nice coat. I spent all of my last money on it. I sold my hats. <laughs> you, uh, you open the door and you, uh, you just hit by it. You hit by it. You fucking hit by it. Mm hmm. Oh God, this is creepy. Well, this is nice. My church. Are you here to pray? I don't pray. Mm. Yeah, sure. I'm here to pray. Well, that's very good. Uh, you both appear to be quite wet. Please come in. Yeah. Uh, he puts the wet jacket on this bench right here. <laughs> she doesn't <laughs> seem to notice. 
And she moves forward. And she picks up the jacket, <laughs> respecting a holy place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, Amara replies, Oh, God. <laughs> I believe saying oh god in a church is something of a disrespectful action. Depends on which god you're owing. I suppose. And also I don't enjoy uh, holier beings so uh, I'm glad I'm Do you have the time? Do you have the time? What's the time? The time for you to shut up. God. <laughs> <laughs> Jack just sits there and stares yeah. at you. <laughs> Hello, Barbados. Am I? Uh, you're Sealy, right? She. Oh boy. Yes, my name is Sealy. Oh, you know my nickname. How delightful. I mean, it's on the. Why is your. Why is your nickname in the dossier? Yeah, there actually wasn't a name on the dossier. Oh, never mind, JK. I roll it, you, we roll back time. I erase your memories, Whoa. <laughs> Well, my name's Celicia. You can call me Celie for short. Oh, nice to meet you, Celie. That's a name I've never said before. <laughs> what a completely odd thing to say, you weird man. I guess that's exactly a doctor. Unregistered. <laughs> yes, I, Dr. Barbados is very important. Amai, what are you doing here? I didn't expect to see you in a place like this. Barbetta, are you crying? No, it's just raining outside. <laughs> it's, yes, but it's... Uh, all right. <laughs> I'm still wet from the outside rain you all, in my eyes. You all are going to catch colds. Um, perhaps... Her expression... Darkens. Perhaps it would be better if you stayed here the night. Oh, don't mind if I do. <laughs> yeah, that sounds fun. Excellent. I'll get the bedroom drawn up. Please, if you have any prayers to offer, the altar is right over there. What are we praying to? Hmm? She looks back, and then almost having to double check what this <laughs> god is, she like leans back around. I believe this is Rakis, the blooming god. You believe? <laughs> She smiles and walks upstairs. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, God, it's only worth the prayers that you put towards it. Mm -hmm. The only people who st who actually stay in churches are fakes, Beretta, and also freaks. <laughs> fakes and freaks. I'll add that to the list of undesirables. Yes. What are you two doing here? Come on. What are you? We're in the middle of some we're in the middle of something important. I mean, we. Ah, uh, uh, stops. N nothing. <laughs> It's, oh. it's all right. Uh, he goes over and like, he he goes to like pull out a handkerchief and then he realizes it's probably soaking wet as yeah. well. And like, I'm. Are you all right? I'm quite all right. I I guess um, you're experiencing one of the benefits of not wearing a shirt, not having a wet shirt. <laughs> I I have. It, not that I noticed too. that you were not wearing a shirt. I've been looking at you in the eyes. No, this, like, <laughs> we're, we're still wearing cloth. Yeah, it's still, it's, it's not much use right now. It's like the worst of both worlds. <laughs> Do you want me to take it off? He, like, takes off his... <laughs> it, it, would not, it would not affect me if you were to take it off because I am looking at you in the eyes. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so, uh... Creepy church, why are you guys here? We're here to investigate uh, points up the stairs, that lady. She's, oh. Mm. He goes through a wide range of emotions <laughs> in like a few seconds. The correct answer to Seely. <laughs> Be careful. No, that's if fine. Not, if not themselves, the things that they align themselves with and their beliefs. Mm. Well, am I? We don't know much about each other, but I can tell you this. If I wasn't living on the edge, I wouldn't be living. <laughs> yeah. Master, would you classify them as a threat? Am I... He goes to say something and then stops. Explicitly? 
I mean, I think, way. Uh, by their own reasoning, I don't think they are a threat. I don't think they think they are a threat. Personally, I think they are a threat to... I think they are a threat to the city. Okay, I'll note that down because you are a trustworthy source. You Job's done. Note that. Yeah, I, I don't. Why would I don't forget things, Beretta? He lies. <laughs> <laughs> also, how did you write that down? It's wet. <laughs> I, it's theoretically noting it down. We have. We, uh, he pulls out a soaking notebook. Look, he had notes. <laughs> They're gone now. <laughs> They're for the wind now. Uh, he goes, I do feel like there is a chance for them not to be, but mm -hmm. I think in being impartial, they have a chance to be a threat more than anyone else. Ah, in, yes. in what way are they impartial? If they are impartial in a way that's predictable, then the threat can be maintained. I don't think they're impartial in a way that can be predictable. <laughs> this, that type of person is neutral. Annoyingly so. Yes, the kind of way where neutrality is, might as well be uh, siding with the aggressors in the first place. Yes, easily as siding with the aggressors as it is siding with us. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Very, very good. Write this down in your brain, Beretta, please. <laughs> I will, and I don't forget. <laughs> Senra pecks you in the side of the face, am I? What? <laughs> Just like it's a heart like whack. It's like, you said siding with us. Does that mean you trust him? <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> Trust is a very powerful word. Yeah, yeah, I mean, at the same time, he's like a cop. <laughs> oh, he's going to play. <laughs> I... I trust Barbados as far as I can throw them, and it's that's, admittedly wow, fairly that's, far. Yeah, that's very far. <laughs> We're ripped. <laughs> Do you think we you very far? <laughs> Probably. I mean, anyone can. Sarisa, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> but I trust certain parts of Barbados. And those are the parts that I can rely on. <laughs> he pointedly looks at <laughs> Barbados. <laughs> the other parts, though, you can take them. I'll leave them. <laughs> What are you so, praying about, Bar uh, Barbados? Hmm. Huh. What am I praying about? I'm just kind of pretending and thinking about it as I go along. Yeah, I know. That's what I was asking. I'm praying the pretty lady is interested in me. <laughs> I am. What? <laughs> yes. No, the actual pretty one. I am. <laughs> oh, you don't know. <laughs> I didn't know that you were blind. <laughs> oh. I, I, I might. <laughs> <laughs> what comes to mind when you pretend to pray then? Um. Hmm. Praying. Wishing. You're going through the motions. What a fascinating question. Oh. <laughs> She's just like there. <laughs> that's that's a neat little trick there. When put through the pressures of being asked to pray, what comes to mind first? What comes to mind first? Hmm, mistakes mostly. Hmm. Do you pray to that's... fix them? Oh. Would praying even fix those mistakes? Ah, uh, so you're simply reminded of them. Yes. That's a far sadder outcome than I was expecting. <laughs> Thank you. To, to ruminate <laughs> on one's failures? No, to look at the potential of a God's mercy or a wish being granted. And for the first thing to think, 
Well, here's all the things that I messed up, and there's no way for them to be fixed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A wish, wish is, is only as powerful as... Oh, go ahead. I'm sure we were about to have the exact same thought at no, the exact please. same time. Go on, go on. No, you be the one that goes on. I was only going to say wishes aren't as powerful as people think. And I was going to say that wishes are only as powerful as the will you put into them. <laughs> I see. <laughs> she says listening to both of you. <laughs> well, how do I put this? I am considering your viewpoint. <laughs> oh. Do oh, you have a opinion? No, actually, not on this subject. Mm -hmm. I can't say I've ever encountered a wish granter or anything like that. Or a god, yeah. for that matter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I... Mm -hmm. Let's see. I've encountered many uh, things that are considered higher than myself. Gods and wish granters are the only things relevant to the conversation. <laughs> but, yes. <laughs> she just looks at you through narrowly slit eyes. I mean, I, gods and wish granters are higher than ourselves, aren't they not? I think she's asking specifically if you've met a god or a wish granter. Have I met a god or a wish granter? Hmm. I've met a wish granter before. A god? Um, I can't really say if I've met a god before, because gods take on many different forms. I suppose so. Well... I'm sure you get this question all the time, but I'll ask anyway. If you met a wish granter, what did you wish for? Don't say more wishes. Hmm, <laughs> <laughs> what did I wish for if I met a wish granter? Just because you meet a wish granter doesn't mean you make a wish. Hmm. She, uh, she stares. Well, then the same as praying. What did you imagine wishing for? Probably something I could never obtain. Hmm. She, uh, she closes her eyes. I see. <laughs> and seems satisfied by that answer. You don't seem as vapid as you let on, boss. What? What does that, what does vapid mean? Barbados is deeper than you think, but his brain is not as large. <laughs> right. My brain is really large, thank you very much. I am a genius in many different crafts. I mean, Basically. he's not just good looks, like, there's something else going on there. Yes, he's also blind. <laughs> just because I don't think you're attractive, Beretta, doesn't mean that I'm blind. Yes, it does. <laughs> I'm glad you have that confidence in yourself. That is a level of shocking and flagrant cruelty I can't say I expected. Can you tolerate this? Yes. In fact, I encourage it. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Someone who's harder to crack is more worth cracking. Are you trying to crack me? I've already started cracking you as soon as we met, boss. I see. Could you stop? <laughs> Allow me to understand your point of view. What is the end goal of that? Of the cracking? Yes. I suppose the end goal isn't as much as the challenge. Hmm. The end goal is to be able to say that I did it. You simply seek to test yourself. Yeah. And you would use other people for, to that end. Absolutely. <laughs> she goes quiet. <laughs> Hey, am I? Hey, am I? <laughs> you feel her picking up the wrong ones. Yeah, I it rubs his brow. <laughs> and he says, you truly are you're related. <laughs> so, uh, you seem to be the curious one in this church. Oh. You think a curious person would be closer to the people? You mean phys spatially or metaphorically? Spatially. She shakes her head. No, I've set up this church very particularly. It suits my needs. Mm-hmm. And those one needs being? 
One doesn't um, buy an entire abandoned distant districts to become closer to people. She, uh, her expression falls again. I was hoping for some distance. Those that would seek me out are those with purpose. Very few people wander over in this direction. So, I suppose to some extent, <laughs> you could view it as me not wanting my time wasted. Oh, God, I can understand that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Senra whispers in your ear, am I? I don't. I don't, I don't like those two together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm always like unpacking his pipe uh, and, and like pushing it all away. I felt like you uh, made really good progress and it's all just... <laughs> <laughs> so it, takes, it takes all types, it takes all types. Uh, Amai doesn't light his uh, pipe once again because it's all damp. Uh, and uh, you notice that... that uh, same smell that's coming off of Amai become a little stronger. I make myself very unreachable so that the only interesting medical cases come my way. <laughs> yes, oh. just like a good doctor. <laughs> Not I never said I was good. <laughs> I see, you're a doctor. Yes, that is one of my professions. And you're here to assess my threat level. Yes. She thinks. Well, I'm going to ask your uh, your professional opinion, not as a doctor, but as a people avoider. Mm hmm. Do you believe that being registered as a threat now, or as something unimportant, would afford me more peace? Hmm. I think being a threat would uh, definitely make your life a little bit more complicated, potentially. Though, due to what I hear about you, you pride neutrality, which means you openly won't get into trouble, but you will attract trouble around you, for you won't stop it yourself. She, uh, she blinks a few times. Neutrality. It's a fascinating concept. Hm. Her expression falls again and looks at you. Neutrality requires an understanding that I am an actor or a piece on the board. I am not. So, in that case, I don't want people to get the wrong impression. I'm an overseer. I have my own laws to abide by. Yeah, so, you, so you consider yourself to be overseeing the game, hmm. that you're not a piece. She, uh, she, yeah, like, raises her hand. I suppose, if you view life as a game. And what gives you this divine right, if not for the god of a church that you're not too sure about? She uh, looks back and then sort of motions around. Oh, well, in that case, I've received express permission to do so. Not only from, <laughs> I suppose, the god of this church, she says with a, like, with a very mean click to her tongue. Um, <laughs> I also have received permission from the various heads of faction. Ooh. Wow. Various heads of faction? Yes. Then my, why presence, am I... my presence was expressly requested. Oh, uh, that's interesting because we were actually sent here to do the legwork on the investigation between our organization's relationship to you. I see. And what have you found so far? Complicated woman. <laughs> Good. <laughs> it's all scoffers. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> but you say you're not a piece on the board, but I feel like just being around the city makes you a piece just naturally. Mm -hmm. That's a I don't think that that needs to be the case. An audience is present at a play. They are yes. still a factor in the, in the whole ordeal going, of it. I'm going to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Of what you know of me so far, is this really an argument you want to be making? Her eyes pinch shut. An argument that I want to be making? Yes. Hmm. Would you draw me out of contentment and quiet? 
you asking me as uh, the doctor, or are you asking me as a fellow person who does not want to be reached? Hmm. She looks at a my. In this case, I suppose I'll try to ask the totality of you. Hmm. I think you saying that leaves the interesting thing where if you were dragged out of this whole into this situation as a piece, you would complicate things to an extreme amount due to your power. You would make this game, quote unquote, trivial, potentially. She sort of shrugs. Who could say? <laughs> Many people could say. <laughs> you could say. Yes, I simply have to ask, is it worth the risk? It's interesting that you see it as an option that you could be dragged out onto the board as a piece. She nods. It's if you dumb. were just an overseer, then you wouldn't have to worry about being drawn in or it's bothered. The, it's the downside of being here in person. Yeah, true. <laughs> Whether we like it or not, sometimes people walk through our door. She motions back to the door and then smiles at Amai again. <laughs> mm -hmm. Also, uh, locks don't work. People break those too easy. Yeah, they can kick them. <laughs> I see. Well, I have to ask you another question. She turns and looks over to Bretta. It seemed like you much preferred me as a member of the audience. I can continue doing that. I don't really care either way. Fantastic. Uh, my only interest is that you do what you want to do. And I suppose my job, and the job of the doctor over there, is to find out if what you want to do is a threat. Yeah, so what is it that you want to do? I suppose I have an answer to your question, then. She, uh, she... Go silent. Face pinches. Completely implacable. Hmm. Yes. I believe I'm an immense threat to what you would intend to accomplish. Your Calamity Tempest, correct? Yeah. Hmm. Yes. Put me down as a greater threat. Cool, cool, cool. I'll note that down in Bretta's brain. <laughs> she, uh, <laughs> she looks back to Bretta. As far as what I intend to do... Everything. Everything? All that I can. Mm hmm. Including going on a date with me? <laughs> Barbados. <laughs> Extremely smooth. She, uh, her eyes pinch shut. Perhaps. <laughs> mm -hmm. Write that down in your brain, bro. You got a maybe. <laughs> you got a maybe? You got a, a maybe, maybe, which is better yeah. than you. Fucking, yeah. <laughs> she, uh, she looks back. I intend to explore the city. I intend to see it for myself. Mm -hmm. And to some extent, I, she stops. Hmm. I don't intend to do any of this, but given my options, this is what I do. Once again, I have to ask, are you prepared do you wish to push someone into something like this while you're entering the stage? Am I steps over? I don't intend to push. I intend to welcome. And he holds out a hand. Oh. <laughs> she uh, sort of nods. And like it takes it implacably. He's oh. doing better than you. <laughs> <laughs> no need. <laughs> In that case. I suppose look forward to or dread the future. For now, I've prepared your beds. Please, spend the night. The first thing that I wish to do, I suppose, is to lend you a place to stay. After all, a church welcomes others with open arms. Mm -hmm. How unexpectedly pleasant of you. Why is it even raining right now anyways? <laughs> she moves upstairs. Perhaps some divine providence. Oh, bad luck. <laughs> Maybe I wished on a god for both. 
She walks upstairs. Ah. And you all <clears throat> spend. Oh God, oh God, I just realized something. The yeah, reality of the situation. Yes, Who's yes, sleeping yes. in what bed? No. <laughs> oh. Dun, dun, dun. Here you go. Over here. Who's going where? They're all lined up like this. You also have every bed is going to be occupied. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> That's not a bed. <laughs> I will be uncomfortable so that you can be comfortable. I, there are, there are space. Have fun there. with the sleepover, you all. <laughs> uh, you can join us. She looks around and then thinks about that for a second. Hmm, I'll consider it. There's enough beds. He picks up bread <laughs> and, and moves them to a bed. Oh my. They have so little control. Invigorating. <laughs> hmm. uh, I believe your name was Beretta. You believe correctly. Could you explain to me what's going on in your head right now? No. <laughs> I, I don't really know myself. It'll remain a mystery then. <laughs> well, I wish you all good night. Click. Hmm. What do I do? One, two, three, three, four. Hmm. Why don't you sleep with Jack? If I. Do you know the time? <laughs> What's the time? Hey, it's time you for you time? to sleep. Stop. He brought, puts brought, his brought. foot on Jack. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can sleep closest to the door and be able to run away if I so choose, or I can sleep farthest away from the door and let Amai get murdered first. <sighs> Paranoid as always. Yeah. It is good to have a strategy as to how not to get murdered. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I will sleep. But if it makes you feel any better, I don't really intend to sleep. Ah, okay. This bed looks the comfiest. <laughs> Jack rolls under the bed. <laughs> Why are you bother Why are you following me? <laughs> Wait, what do you Why do all these creatures keep following me around? And by creatures, he doesn't just mean legends. He means like... <laughs> Perhaps uh, they're simply drawn to you. Listen, he like uh, is upside down looking under the bed. If you keep making noise, I won't be able to sleep. So just uh, shh for a little bit, okay? <laughs> uh, Jack rolls up into the hermit crab ball. Yeah, and if, and if uh, you're quiet, I might tell you what time it is. Jack curls up harder. <laughs> yeah. <that's what> I <laughs> Sunra, Sunra like leans around. Hmm. Weird situation we're in. Isn't this the part where you'd normally like gossip or something? He says prodding a mic. Please stop. No gossip. I'm done. <laughs> am I? Yes. He's spreading rumors about my ass. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite prodigious. <laughs> <laughs> Don't support them. <laughs> I you didn't say they, anything. You know they would have grabbed something. And you chose to let them grab my ass. <laughs> yes. Somebody has to. <laughs> I'm pretty right sure it. you haven't got ag action in quite some time. <laughs> I don't need it. I'm a loner. I'm too cool for people. <laughs> you say that. Methinks the doctor doesn't have the right to be so picky, then. <laughs> I... You wouldn't understand, Beretta, would you? No, I wouldn't. You're a correct boss. I am but an insignificant worm in between, in, in the shadow of your splendor. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll tell the sheep that. Okay. Wait, sorry, not the sheep. It's a human. Sorry, that <laughs> human is a real human. No, please tell the sheep. <laughs> don't, don't, don't take my wrong information. I, 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 I turn back time again. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. Oh, it would be ungood if you were so wrong. <laughs> so, so what's up with you and the very human girl, anyways? I don't, I don't know what you mean. What is up with me uh, and the, the very human girl? 
of the one at the shrine. I the asked tall you, one? I went, yes, I asked you if you dated, and then you ran out of the room. I mean, I just walked out of the room to our next location to do our job. Very briskly? No, at a regular pace. I'm just very fast. Oh, yeah, sure. That's why I got to the church first, when you were, like, crying in the rain. Only because I've been carrying you all day. Oh, yeah, <laughs> sure, sure thing, he moves beds. What a... What a terrible boss. No, <laughs> yeah, I never said I was going to be a good boss. I... He looks at Berta. I didn't know you worked with them. It's a recent arrangement. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it doesn't affect our relationship. Berta says they're an exorcist. Oh. <laughs> well, um, I guess you might be the first one that I asked this, but I'm working on creating a little bit of a what you might say, rule set. Basically, I want to cause as little bloodshed as possible. Oh, well, that seems like a reasonable request. That includes legends. I see that as reasonable as well. What about you, Barbados? What? Making some sort of thing. Look, I don't really want to get involved with a group of uh, exorcists. And here they, you find yourself in a slumber party with two and two legions. Uh, you're not an exorcist, Bretta. I'm the head exorcist <laughs> of the Calamity Tempest, actually. I'm your boss. That would make me better than you. That doesn't make me not an exorcist. You're horrible at arguing. <laughs> <laughs> right. Look, uh, mm -hmm. things are complicated. Yeah. I normally don't like exorcists because they're complicated people with complicated motives, just like I'm a complicated person with complicated motives, so I couldn't get along with some people like that. Hold on, let's explore that. Mm hmm Do you not like yourself, Dr. Barbados? Uh, does anyone like themselves? Am I? <laughs> I like parts of myself, and I hate parts of myself. I think that's only natural. I think that's a reasonable response. What is your rebuttal, Barbados? What about you, Beretta? Do you like yourself? <laughs> I'm learning to like myself. Damn. Isn't that brave? Yeah. I don't that think is. it's anything in particular. But this group I'm creating is not, it's not a faction. I don't want it to be, but. Is it, is it a cabal like uh, Sienna keeps <laughs> saying, which is, I just looked up in the dictionary, is another word for faction. Oh, wow, you can read. Um, <laughs> it's actually a thesaurus. What I mean is, <laughs> I want it to be a framework. Mm -hmm. There is a chance with these this many people, these many this many foreigners, that they'll end up doing something stupid, that mm -hmm. something they'll regret. You're suggesting a series of laws in which for all exorcists to abide by. Yes, nothing crazy. At least what I think isn't crazy. Uh, you can make the laws, but that doesn't mean they'll follow them. Mm -hmm. And But for the most part, there'll be a bunch of people who do. If we're all on the same page, we'll find those who... Oh, we'll notice those who go against it much easier. That's mm. really no different than Tempest, isn't it, boss? I you mean, can make all the laws that you want, but at the end of the day, you need somebody to enforce them. Yes, and how are you going to enforce the laws? Are you going to get the people who are following the laws to enforce the laws on other people? Well, it's not really... Saying law is a little bit too strong. A guideline? I just want to make a promise. 
Hmm. The enemy that I am fighting isn't the other exorcists. Mm -hmm. There is something underneath the city that wants us to fight each other. Yes. Oh yeah, I've been there. Oh? Oh. Well, this being, I think, may be threatened. Mm hmm By the sheer amount of exorcists? Mm hmm This boiling pot. I don't... Now, from what little I understand of you, am I? That seems very presumptuous. Mm hmm I mean, so. you seem so willing to listen to every angle of a situation before acting. And after all, that's what happened when we tried to catch, capture that Legion, isn't it? I am... I seek to discuss with whatever this entity is. I suppose I my question is, am I? Mm. What is it about this entity that leads you to believe that it's an enemy so quickly. I'm not saying you're wrong. <sighs> that is actually a good question. I don't think that it is an enemy. I think it sees us as enemies. And that is a dangerous place to be. It is trying to survive. They are trying to live. And anything that is against it, anything that is against whatever it perceives as its ideals, is a threat. Yeah. Survival is the oldest excuse in the book. I want to understand how we can get around this. And that might be a Herculean task. I might be end up in more pain than I should ever be. Shut yes. up. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but I think it's an endeavor worth worth doing. For if I didn't, I wouldn't be myself. I suppose then the question is. What is it about your ideals that puts it, that makes you an enemy to this entity that we don't understand? I don't know. It, what are your ideals? My ideals are coexistence. I believe that, that everybody can live with each other. Regardless contradictions, disputes, they are all part of it. A little bump in the road does not mean that you should destroy it. Or? Then what about you, boss? What are your ideals? Surely uh, something brought you down this road to make such an unruly, unlikable, uncaring person such as you a doctor of all things. <laughs> <laughs> so girl laughs like a fucking chicken. <laughs> My smiles. Mm. What Britta said is just a knife to Barbados. It's this thing of Barbados just kind of like looks at the wall after knocked after not knocked after Beretta <laughs> said that. Well, no, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> I, my ideals are, hmm, <laughs> you're crying. My ideals are uh, confusing, even to myself. I am a product of my own life. Uh, every step I take was a path that sometimes I feel like I didn't determine myself, but rather did out of a sort to destroy the ideals around me. 
my oh, ideals me. destroying the ideals around me. I see. But that's not really an ideal, isn't it? It's more like an absence of ideals. I guess you could say that. So I guess you could say I'm an absence of ideals. I still believe it is. Because there is... He looks at Barbados. You don't apply that ideal evenly. Mm -hmm. You have point. a will to this. You have an opinion. Yes. I'm hypocritical by nature. Mm -hmm. I guess you could say I even destroy my own ideals, I guess. That's I do sad. things because I feel like it. I don't know. I haven't really thought much about myself. I could see why you'd be in such conflict with yourself then. Uh, he, sh he shrugs. I don't really want to get into the nitty gritty of it, really. <laughs> No, let's oh, unpack this. Why is it? <laughs> I, why is it that you want to avoid further thought about yourself? I do, because I don't want to, bro. Leave me alone. <laughs> oh, I'm just, I'm just. We're, we're stuck here. We might as well talk. I'm. Well, you talk recently... amongst yourselves. You, you know, unpack things amongst yourself. I'm. I'm. What time is it? What time is it? What's the time? What time I'm is it? Would you like to talk about I the time? I pick him up and I shake him. <laughs> <laughs> I've found myself in a place recently where I've had to do a lot more reflecting on myself. Mm -hmm. And I've found that it's been good for me. And if I can impart any of that wisdom upon you, I think maybe it was all worth it that I joined this organization. It'll be worth it when you get the money in your pocket, Bretta. Don't you worry. Oh, so your ideals are money then? The bottom line at the end of everything, the fact that you get paid for what you do. Living comfortably <laughs> is really nice. I enjoy living comfortably. But you could choose to live comfortably with any profession. You could have been a lawyer, a professional <laughs> liar, which I assume you would be excellent at. I... What is it about saving lives, especially for an organization like Calamity Tempest that makes you want to live comfortably? I have many professions that I can do, many skill sets, like magic, archaeology, medical, I can do many things. But when I was traveling, archaeology, for example, isn't really the most money-paying thing because you have to stay in one place and dig a hole. Yeah, also, history's dumb. <laughs> sure. It's, it's not dumb. <laughs> it's pretty dumb. Dumb. Maybe you're dumb, Britta. If history was smart, then it'd still be alive. Being... <laughs> Being, being a doctor is just the easiest way to get money because it's a job you can do anywhere because everywhere you go, people are dying. And if people are dying, they will shill many, many monies in <laughs> order to stay alive, even in the weirdest of places. So that's why you do it then? For the money? Yes. Those are your ideals. It's not an absence of ideals. That sounds cool. That's something that you tell yourself so that you sound better. <laughs> I guess. At the end of the at the end of the day, the bottom line is that you live comfortably. Your ideals are the improvement of your own life. Sure. <laughs> See? Now that you know, you can live accordingly. <laughs> sure thing, Breda. I'm going to live accordingly just from now on. You set me in the right and narrow. The thick layer of sarcasm doesn't hide the truth. Mm hmm Someone... Someone has pierced into me like you have at a certain point. Called oh, me a virtuous man. A certain champion of Noctua. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Minus five. <laughs> Minus five. <laughs> they clung on to me just like you do, Beretta. Do you think I cling? <laughs> you 
cling a lot, yes. Oh my, what the fuck is that for? What did you mean by this? I think I think he was just trying to get a read on fucking Barbados. <laughs> a read on Barbados? Yeah. Yes. Like, like, uh, like, what, what exactly, like, what kind of read are, like, his emotions right now? Yes. He's like, yeah. Very complicated. Uh, it's like, oh god, the best way you could say it, it's like some man gaslit himself. Uh, a lot of complicated <laughs> ah. emotions, a lot of uh, inconsistencies <laughs> in himself, and mm. uh, a lot of. Uh, Specific sadness. Uh, you could have potentially tell, told a lot when uh, Bretta poked at Barbados about being a doctor and why a, such a cruel and unkind man would choose such a profession. Mm -hmm. But yeah. He, yeah, he sits back and is sort of watching <laughs> Barbados uh, talk to himself almost. Yeah? Why, why are you... What's wrong, Britta? You in pain? Yes. <laughs> Why are you crying? Because I'm in pain. Because you're in pain? Why are you in pain? I'm in pain because you've made me sad. I'm not afraid to admit it. Yeah, why did I make you sad? <laughs> because Barbados. you reminded me of something that made me sad. Mm hmm Yes? Uh, but he looks over and says, Barbados, have you ever thought the reason why you try to hurt others is so that you can deflect from yourself? Oh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you Are just back help? up for just a second? Okay, I'll back up for a second. Look. I hurt people, yes. Does that make me a bad guy? <laughs> you laughed at that? <laughs> <laughs> you know. Look, I I do what I do. I enjoy my life currently, probably. Uh, I'm well fed. I have a place to stay. Uh, I have things to do from a day to day basis. What is there any more to life than that? You're talking. That is so sad. It almost sounds to me that the profession that you've chose is to counterbalance the harm that you feel that you do. Hmm. No. It's too... Let's say... I live in a very interesting place. With a, with a philosophy in that place that all life is sin. Would you agree to that? No. No. And <laughs> that the only good that could exist in the world was death, the natural cycle of things. Now, what would be the biggest middle finger to a society that believed death is the greatest thing of all? Not to dying. That. Yeah, he looks over at <laughs> Brad to see if they're gonna answer. <laughs> I became a doctor just as a middle finger to the place I lived. Simple as that. That mysterious place that you won't tell me about. No, I won't talk about it at all. I mean, you just did, and I didn't even ask. Uh, not any names or, you know, locations, just that it is a place that exists, probably. A name means nothing to me. It tells a lot. It's a lot more telling to know that the ideals of this place are so harsh and cruel. If you keep pointing out the inconsistencies, I'm going to crawl back into my little hole even more, brother. <laughs> you just kept saying wrong things about me being a doctor to balance out the pain I cause other people. No. That's, that's the opposite of you crawling into a hole. You came out of the hole and you told me about yourself. Yeah, and then you, then you poked fun at me and now I'm gonna go back later. <laughs> <laughs> Amai goes, Barbados, as much as I dislike you, I feel like... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you I feel kidding like the, me? I feel like the biggest insult is I feel sad for you. Yeah. I've gotten that before many a times. It's fine. I you don't wish... have to feel sad for me. I feel sad for myself. 
We're more similar than you think. Mm-hmm. I know we're similar. I've told you so myself. I suppose <laughs> that's the human condition, isn't it? <laughs> Feeling sad for ourselves. No. And trying to come to terms with the things that we are. No. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He uh, looks at this thing and shakes it more. <laughs> you just shake it, it's gone quiet. No, it's gone quiet, huh? Well, that's nice. Much, much like Jack over there, I feel like we all are missing a piece. <sighs> oh, <laughs> don't <laughs> say that. <laughs> don't say that I'm missing a piece. What you got in that pipe over there, am I? And as as the conversation goes on, just simultaneously upstairs, fucking Celia's just like lying in her bath, no, like no. hearing the noise emanating up from the floor below, the talk of the dank wizard weed, etc. Just like quietly thinking to herself, like, huh. That's fun. This city's going to eat them alive. <laughs> she sparkles and then submerges herself. And the next day comes. And you all head out. I'm gonna throw you to a place. If that's cool. Yeah. Hey, king. Yeah. Toss me, king. Okay. Toss me like Amaya would toss Barbados. <laughs> Very far. Like a pizza dough. Eventually, the rain does clear, and you are seen off by, um, by your, uh... I don't know how to Friend? describe her relation. No. Mm. Lover? <laughs> local uh, priest. Local, yeah, local priest. I mean, even that's just wrong. <laughs> Admirer. Wait, love her? What? <laughs> you, you, you jump Barbados few, thinks because she was naked the floor thing. above him that he <laughs> actually got laid. <laughs> see? Okay. Over here. Y'all are seen off. As. Alerts your data. <laughs> One thing's wrong here. None of this. No rain. Well, this was a pleasing visit. I hope you all had a fantastic time. Please. If you're ever confused or lost, don't hesitate to stop by my church. After all, you provided me such wonderful insight into the city. I'm glad we could help. Thank you for being a threat. <laughs> mm -hmm. That in itself is something it's somewhat delightful. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Also, by the way, I often stop by the old abandoned noble district just to hang out because it's oh. pretty empty. <laughs> I'll be in the area. I'll be, I'll be in the, <laughs> I'll be in the hang, area. I'll hang out. The diner there is one of my favorite places. I see. I frequent it as well. Yes. <laughs> you established that, and she registers that back. You don't want to climb up this tree. It's can, it's very damaged. I, I was just saying that if we, I don't want to get shot if I'm trespassing or anything, can I come back to the diner? <laughs> of course. This district is always ready and willing for those with no other place to go. I, I have places to go, and like right now, I'm leaving. <laughs> <Later>. <laughs> Come on, Key. He points what? to the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Chunk, Chunk moves forward, and Celia actually looks over to Amai before he leaves. Well, I wish you the best of luck with your promise. Yeah. He turns back and goes. If you ever want to experience the world, you... I can show you. Hmm. He's I'll doing consider. way better than you. <laughs> shut, shut up. 
I, <laughs> I'll consider this. Hmm. If you want to find out what your personal justice is, you won't find it hidden away in this church. Hmm. She considers this briefly. Hmm. Well, I can always start experiencing far closer to home. She uh, then starts to travel off in this direction. A look of like utter determination in her eyes. And am I out of the corner as you walk off, you see her with a pile of leaves that she very, very carefully piled up, just face plant and lie there <laughs> motionless. <laughs> Apparently this is her first step. <laughs> she uh, doesn't right. move. <laughs> I think you broke through to her. <laughs> I, I don't. Yeah, I don't, I don't <laughs> yeah, we don't. Let's leave before it gets weirder. <laughs> yeah. Come back here. I'm giving you to Carver for another statue. Yeah. No. What, what time? What, what time is it? <laughs> time for you to come with me. <laughs> you, you all head out, and weirdly, there's a place on your mutual uh, mutual destinations list that you uh oh it's uh it's mm -hmm. really fucking there after all. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, on your way out, it only makes sense, and y'all realize you're just going to the same fucking place. And, uh, you walk. You walk forwards. And towards a gigantic boat that leads... <laughs> oh, boy. To Tide HQ. What? Oh. Hey, uh, hey, Nico, you here? <laughs> hey, J-Man, you here? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I okay. wasn't expecting to be involved for real. <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, okay. okay. The door. I'm emotionally preparing myself. We're good. <laughs> emotionally we're good, we're good, we're good. We're good. Uh, the door swings I open. Have to. It's the only way. And there's a man standing there. Oh, um, interesting group we have here today. Uh, oh, Calamity Tempest, huh? Uh, and then sees am I, and it's just like, oh, um, hi. Sorry. Can I help you? Looks at the two familiars behind you. You're a mage. Um, yeah, uh, how, how can I help? Are you here. here to apply for an exorcist position? <laughs> Not exactly. Um, I'd like to speak to one Julius here. I see. Um, give me a second. Run, 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 run. Why Door. are we here? Door cracks open. Why are we here? I uh, <laughs> suffer. You uh, you tempest, you tempest guys. Why, why are you here? We haven't, we haven't broken any protocols or anything, right? <laughs> That's a great question, boss. Why are we here? Uh, GM, why am I here? I forget. <laughs> This is literally the biggest group of exorcists in the city. Oh, we're here to talk to exorcists. <laughs> it, it would yeah. be it would be stupid to not. I thought you we're here to see your exorcists. Well. Oh, uh, right. Uh, okay. Um, why? What are, what, are, what, are, what do they do to you? <laughs> no, nothing. I'm just curious, really. Mm. We're we're a part of the uh, spooky investigations unit, and it's our job to know who. Wait, she no, has. that's our job. That's that's specifically our job. Tempest doesn't have an exorcist group. Uh, there's um, multiple coffee places. <laughs> here. Why can't there be multiple, you know, spooky people? You know. Uh yes, uh, they're they're allowed up. Um, they're uh, Tyr has instructed us to um. Uh, Oh, I'll hold on. I'll translate for you. Uh, he like he leans back and like somebody like this guy whispers in Sam's ear, and you overhear pretty clearly. Tear said, "Um, to take away the Tempest's weapons, like uh, they robbed us of ours." Okay. Um. So for safety's sake, if you have any weapons on you, you have to leave them behind down here. Sorry, I don't make the rules. <laughs> That's fine. I'll just place this. Here. Barbados that's kind, of, that's kind head. of stupid. Barbados here can shoot poison from his fingers. Oh, uh, if you're a mage, then, uh, <laughs> Sam, Sam <laughs> takes a step back in this way. Uh, he'll be right back in a second. Uh, what's, what's his problem? 
if you're a, if you're a mage, especially with Tempest. I didn't even know Tempest had any mages. Good thing we got this made up special. Uh, you gotta wear the shame bucket. <laughs> he, he hands you, he hands you what appears to be a straw bucket with two idols cut in it. It's, it's only, it's only fair, boss. Um, it'll it'll why does it start to place a weapon <laughs> why down Why do I have to skin? wear a bucket if I'm a, why does, does this it'll stop my magic? Yeah, it'll suppress your magic. <laughs> what, what my magic makes me die? Huh? <coughs> That's a. Uh, then they should send someone who isn't a mage. <laughs> Look, I why, I don't want to put on this bucket. Okay. <laughs> I, no, why would I? I'm, Look, <laughs> boss, it's only proper that we listen to the rules of this organization while we are in their walls. I I will promise my ever loving heart out. <laughs> that I do not want to wear this bucket, please. Your, your heart has no love in it. <laughs> I, the J-Man, out of character, I'm choosing to deploy Rui right now. Ah, oh, excellent. <laughs> there you go. Deploy him. I will deploy him. I had him upstairs. He comes downstairs. Okay. There you go. Yeah, Rui approaches and then comes in through the door behind Sam. Yo, Sam, where'd you go? Oh, hey, uh... I, uh, <laughs> you look at the situation look and you see Barbados holding a bucket. Why is the Tempest twink here? <laughs> uh, he's here to investigate our exorcists or something, sir. Why? Uh, because, uh, they have to make sure they're like, what, why? They order some shit. <laughs> Tempest yeah. twink. Look, we're just investigating exorcists in the area, see if there's any troublesome ones. We've been investigating some and we could always share information. Don't make me wear the bucket. You're gonna have to wear the bucket. <laughs> oh, damn it, he put the bucket on. <laughs> really? Sam, you're really Sam, my best friend. Sam, my best Sam puts friend. a hand down low for like a like a discreet low five. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> nice, come on in. Hey, uh, uh you back there. my swords. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, second, he's, like, uh, he's leaning against the, <laughs> the thing. Beretta, Beretta gives him her three swords, <laughs> and then she just starts giving him gun after gun <laughs> after gun after gun after gun after gun after gun. Sam peeks his head past and looks over to my, you, uh, are you with Tempest? No. Okay, good. We don't have another bucket. <laughs> <laughs> Sam! Sam is going to literally run and hide is his plan. Now that he's gotten away with this, he's going to lie low. <laughs> that bucket Fucking... really brings out your eyes, boss. <laughs> oh, Rui, my best friend. <laughs> Rui, so, so you, you gotta you gotta talk to talk to Tyr, huh? I guess yes we are. Oh boy. Yep. Alright, this is gonna be hilarious. Come on this way. We can have a civil conversation. It doesn't have to be something hilarious. Um, oh, Alexia, it's, what are you doing you know, here? You, she's like, she stops as Barbados passes first and she gets this look on her face like, what the fuck? Of and course then, you had to have a reason for me to wear the bucket, fucker. <laughs> <laughs> and she, she goes back to like, oh, hmm, guess I don't know that one. <laughs> and uh, she like looks over, oh, I'm, um, I'm, she is here to hang out, I think mostly. Alexia just off to the side, like, yeah, it's um, it's it's been nice. I've been I spent the last two days here. It's been get away here. That's good. Um, you deserve a break. <laughs> thanks. Um, it's totally not because my parents are furious with me and I'm hiding somewhere. Oh, and what are they mad about? Everything that happened on the day of the parade. <laughs> oh, it wasn't your fault, was it? <laughs> she just lets out a, like a, yeah, that doesn't fucking matter to them, though. Nice! Well, if you ever need any help, I do know a thing or two about dealing with particularly suppressive parents. That's good, yeah, I'll, I'll count on you. Um, I've been, I've been counting on your older brother a lot, so, yeah, the, the Pietro family's really been here for me. <laughs> She stops for a second and she's like, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> um, oh, uh, one other thing. Uh, if you see Skyus anywhere, just let him know I'm over here. Um, also, only tell Skyus that I'm over here, okay? He's the only one that gets to know. 
Your secrets are safe with me. Beretta Thank Pietro you. is no snitch. Thanks. <laughs> but She's if uh, you ever need a change of scenery, scenery, feel free to stop by my apartment again. Hold on. <laughs> Her eyes go somewhere far away. Uh, Karsh is like, yeah, I mean, it makes sense that you guys are hanging out and still not 100% sure why you're hanging out with us, uh, especially in a big poofy dress like that. But at the same time, I gotta nice say, dress. yeah, she's dressed. She's overdressed. It's kind of nice. Karsha leans over to Beretta. I'm teaching her how to peel carrots. Oh, that was a very big moment for me. I already know how to peel carrots. I went, I, I traveled around the world. Please take me more seriously. Yeah, so, uh, it's hard for me because my hands are backwards, but, uh, <laughs> and he goes back to it. You see that, Gosh. Alexia? The things we take for granted is people with our hands going the right way. When you put it like that, I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, she then makes eye contact with Amai and, like, bows her head slightly. Um, good to see you again. Ah, it's wonderful to see you too. You're looking amazing. I'm glad to see you're all right. I heard you were taken by the Lord of Lanterns. I apologize. That was, I didn't account for that. And that was my mistake. It's, it's all right. This guy has got me out. Um, would it be okay if I came by the Mirage District again? Of course, you're always welcome. You can come by my shop anytime, um, and you can enter it at any point. She seems no? content with that. <laughs> punched in the lung. <laughs> she <laughs> got punched in the lung again. <laughs> I'm always open for a talk if you so want it. That sounds nice. She sort of trails off. All right, come on, Tempest Twink. We have an investigation to do. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I believe that's your official title within these walls. So, uh, I'm simply trying not to cause an international incident. What? Internet? Beretta? Yeah. <laughs> Rui keeps walking and he also, like, as he keeps going, he eventually turns around and looks at you all again. Oh yeah, by the way, how much do you all value your clothing? No, uh, it's... why? I mean, this is an important question to ask, you know? I mean, you're our guests here, you might as well answer the question. What's the time? What time is it? <laughs> this one just I, mutters from the ground. It's like 11 a.m. Come on here, little little guy. <laughs> person, little thing. Uh, I I value my clothes a little bit. I have other clothes to wear, though. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a shame. Keeps walking. <laughs> <laughs> my best Something friend. Expected, yeah. What did he? What did he mean by this? I. You'll find out. About, well, it's a it's a little adventure, Beretta. Don't you love this? So, I don't wearing, hate it. I'm barely wearing clothes anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> Follow upstairs. You all go upstairs. Lexi. Let me gather y'all up. <laughs> Lexi is having a perfectly good day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hanging out with Karsh, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> bad. Sometimes you gotta. Get assimilated into the tide on accident. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, she did this to herself. Nobody <laughs> asked her to. That's <laughs> true. She did do it. Listen, sometimes you have to hide, and the tide is the only place you can find. Someone has to do it. <laughs> Unfortunate. What a, a sad state of affairs. <laughs> okay. Where are you? I need. This is very important. I need to find one character. My dad. Yeah, it's your dad. Dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really, I'm hanging out on the side. Hey. So you, you, you wind up coming upstairs and really leads you to a door over here. Oh, that took me way less time to load in than I. <laughs> hey. Rui, Rui, before opening the door, turns around and looks all you. So, uh, yeah, this up ahead's the captain. We, we were having a bit of a meeting right now, and, uh, just so you know in advance, uh, uh, today's, uh, today's one of those days, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel you. Oh, no, mm -hmm. I don't think you do. Oh. Because you're the, temp you're the Tempest Twink, you know? No, apparently <laughs> I've been informed that nobody feels you. 
It's just one of those days. <laughs> Guys, who is my best friend? It's true, I've heard nobody feels him. Girl. I'm like, pats Barbados on the shoulder and just shakes his head. <laughs> just like, just, just how it'd be. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anyways, yeah, everyone pops open the door. <laughs> you may enter. Oh, you're already coming in. <laughs> Wow. Uh, what brings you all here? Rui, take a seat at my side. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hello. Get fucked, Rui. You're <laughs> stuck here now, too. <laughs> so, what brings me the pleasure of seeing the illustrious Dr. Barbados in my own home? Oh, you can tell who I am with the bucket on. Yes. <laughs> oh. It's the outfit. Yeah, probably. Hello, it is I, Dr. Barbados of the Tempest, uh, now with Buckethead. <laughs> I see. Well, isn't this just a wonderful official meeting between two factional parties? And am I. <laughs> And Hello. Hello. <laughs> Amai seems to be representing a faction of. I mean, uh, what was the word that you said? Boss? A cabal. A cabal of his own. Yeah. I don't represent the Mirage District in any way. <laughs> oh man, dear! I heard you got kicked out. Kicked out of where? You're going to need to be more specific. <laughs> <laughs> the, Mirage, the Mirage District. Oh, I see. Yes, I suppose that is what happened. <laughs> Sandra yeah. paints a face. <laughs> a voice cheers up from the other side. Just the light. What's the time? Do you know what the time is? What's the time? Everyone looks and goes like, 11.50. 11 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> and then another voice chirps up from the side. What's the time? Oh. What's the time? What's the time? <laughs> Scooting around. <laughs> oh. Oh, good. <laughs> that damn thing hiding under the table? <laughs> I thought the table seemed awfully balanced. Well, <laughs> we're never going to hear the end of that, so, uh, thanks. Oh, uh, no. It learned something new. <laughs> um, I apologize for Jack. Uh, they're currently in a state of disrepair. Yeah. So, well. <clears throat> My child. Leans in. I assume you're here to coordinate or something? I was communicated well, as much. I was sent on a job with one of my new underlings, Bretta. To pay attention. Yes, I am. Uh, that we were supposed to investigate some some exorcists in the area, the new influx, and see if they're a threat or not. Hmm. Right, and this is a, obviously one of the biggest collections of exorcists new to you, due to your new uh, protocol or whatever. <laughs> and. I, it would be dumb for me not to stop by here doing my job. Brad, sit at the which table. We, which, we are very, which we are very happy that you are settling into this new position. Yes. Hmm. He, uh, he thinks, well, seeing that the Tempest now has exorcists too is deeply upsetting in its own way. I'd uh, barely say we're exorcists. I see. Well, <laughs> if you perhaps want to relocate to the, um, more official exorcist organization, we'd be more than happy to have you. I it's okay, I'm an official to, exorcist. But I get more money where I am currently. <laughs> Sandra looks at Tyr like, are you fucking serious right now? Tyr like looks over it, looks over to Sonder, just like, like gives him a shitty look like, <laughs> the Tempest exorcists are weenies. <laughs> <laughs> Sunder, Sunder, gives a gives a light shrug, like, eh. <laughs> and then looks back. Hmm. Yes. Well, I am quite literally legally required to provide you with the dossier of all of our hires. So, yes. um, Sam, y yeah, I hope it's thick. <laughs> uh. It um, it honestly isn't because we're still in the middle of training. The uh, Sam moves over. Actually, hmm, here's an idea. Yes. Do you want to observe our exorcist training and recruitment protocol? Sure. Do you want some of the dossiers I have currently? Yes. I think we could exchange information. This is 
Very useful. Um, I feel bad. You can take the bucket off of your head now. Oh, thank God. Oh. <laughs> oh, isn't it nice that these two organizations that are no longer competing for territory are able to work together and communicate? Uh, I... I Tear, just... Tear looks at you like you just vomited on the floor. <laughs> it is a look of such absolute disgust <laughs> that it just strikes you through, and then it goes, yeah! <laughs> Julian watches Beretta slowly scoot herself across the table. Very quickly, puts his hand on Tyr's shoulder, and then kind of like nudges him back a little bit, and he he whispers something into his ear. You know what would be a you know you know what might be a good idea though, boss. What's that? He he looks in and looks over at the Tempest Twink and looks and like returns the whisper of his ear. Get him, uh, make him, we should make him take part in the training. <laughs> that would be hysterical. Uh, hey, um, Dr. Barbados. Yes. Sunder's eyes drift over <laughs> to <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been interested in seeing firsthand exactly how hard the tide drains? <sighs> Just here to humiliate me more, huh? You, you, would, you, would, you would be well to know that our Dr. Barbados here is in peak physical condition as he just trained all day yesterday. Uh -huh. I actually heard from my pal Jericho who stares a little bit at your place that uh, he actually likes to sit around and watch training exercises all day. Mm -hmm. Might be it's, good it's you know, to learn, learn a bit more, huh? As the prestigious sure. sit on his ass. I'll humor you. Rumors of my ass is spread far and wide. For so I heard. <laughs> I'm always just like sitting there, smiling, hand on his chin, <laughs> just waiting. I'll, I'll humor you and I'll take part. It's only fair on one. Oh, you suggest I... you take part, huh? Good thing. Good thing you say you would do it, huh? <laughs> yeah. Clap um, his hands together. How 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 generous of you! Really, <laughs> never make me wear the bucket here again. Deal. Yeah, there we go. Uh, tra tra training is less humiliating than the bucket. The good thing the bucket doesn't even do anything. I figured. <laughs> Please, Rui, don't speak ill of the, the bucket. Did many things for me personally. You know what you're right. <laughs> Sander just regrets. And then looks up. <laughs> Tyr looks over at Sander and is like, "Oh." You know what? I'm starting to understand why that noble downstairs got the wrong impression. <laughs> oh yeah? You just now picking up on that? A little bit, yeah. I didn't... <laughs> fucking satellite. It's... that's... do you want me to... Sandra, do you need help? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on with Beretta? <laughs> She's being a satellite. <laughs> okay. Uh, he... <laughs> he looks down at Beretta and he's like, Hey, Brada. And then looks back to Tyr, he's like, nah, this is fine. Hey, Sandy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Tyr's like, Tyr puts a hand on Brada's shoulder and is like, okay. <laughs> you know not what you, <laughs> that which you do. <laughs> he kind of like, he, she says that, Sandy fucking... <laughs> His, his back goes straight, his entire fucking body tenses. Okay, we're, <laughs> we're gonna sit like this for a little bit. <laughs> Tyr you. tactically places himself between Sonder and Beretta. <laughs> I am not responsible for anything <laughs> that person does. What do you mean, boss? You're my direct superior. I, I, I may be your superior, fashion. but he points at Sonder. I'm not getting involved with that. <laughs> Sonder has a light war flashback. <laughs> hey, hey, you guys. Hey, <laughs> Tommy moves in. Y'all still arguing about Tempest and Tide stuff? What? Were we ever arguing? Yeah, no, we were just discussing business, Ami. Please. Huh. Yeah, we're professionals, okay? Last I checked, you have another guest with you. Why not hear him out? <laughs> Motions with her head over to Amai. Amai's just like sitting there. I'm waiting my time. Um, Amai sits quietly. Amai moves over to Amai and is like, I'm really sorry about them. It, they kind of get this way. It, unless you redirect to like a different thing, like hard redirect, it will go on forever. Beretta's I waving was... at Amai. 
I was, <laughs> I mean, that. I was going to step in at some point. She pats you on the back. <laughs> Go get him. <laughs> uh, he he looks over. Uh, are we are we done with that? Yes, I think we're good. <laughs> All right. Um, I've wanted to come here today to express um a piece of concern and a uh, opportunity to to work together. You see, I have with the amount of exorcists that are coming into the city, the amount of magically inclined, I wanted to come up with a sort of, not a group, but more of a Ball. connection. Hmm. Not a cabal, a, <laughs> I, when I, a bond, if it were. Hmm. Oh. I want to touch base and understand each other and come up with a set of agreements. Hmm. Ways that we should act within the city and things that we should and should not do. Tear folds his hands. Okay. I understand, at the very least, enough to know that I don't properly understand the magical aspect of this city. The Tide doesn't have many mages to begin with. I'm not a mage, and um, I never bothered learning about it. So, perhaps having a consultant would be nice. You've proven yourself to be exceptionally competent. <laughs> he grabs Bretta by the wrist. See <laughs> 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 the child. <laughs> he looks over to Barbados. Does the Tempest agree to this as well? The lead exorcist I, of the Tempest agree to his, uh, this man's uh, opinion as an expert. Any <laughs> guidelines that Amai says we probably already follow in the first place? That is about as positive as you will get from that man, so I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> Most likely, these things are going to be common sense. Yes. But the, <laughs> but the idea is that we are on the same page. All these people who are coming in are not used to the ways that we do it. Mm. And they may have differing opinions on how to interact with the creatures that we face. As long as we understand a way to deal with it, that we don't just kill. That's all that I seek. Tear looks over to Sonder. Sonder looks at Tyr. Sonder, I feel like before they came here, when Tyr was like, hey, we're meeting with the Tempest, yeah. Sonder was like, I fucking told you I wasn't dealing with faction shit. Yeah. Why, why are you pulling me into this? Tyr, Tyr looks over to Sonder and is like, he says, no, just killing automatically. Of course. I, uh, looks back over to Amai, looks back over to Sonder, sort of like rubs his forehead for a second. You know the disposition that I've been attempting. <laughs> Sunder. I have been Sunder. trying to be a people person. Sunder, <laughs> Sunder tilts his head. He's got kind of a shitty... Like, he's got the makings of a shitty smile where he's yeah. like, yeah, tell me about what you've been trying to do. <laughs> I've been trying to be a people person. Uh -huh. I'm curious. Mm. Knowing what you know about the gestures around, would agreeing to something like this be a wise idea, or would I be viewed as some part of a wizard clique? I hear they gossip. I hear they talk about his ass. <laughs> oh. Tears says, says wizard clique, and Saunders like, what the fuck are you talking about? No, listen, I saw it firsthand. They talk a lot about his ass. <laughs> I hate everything. I, I, I... I, they they do. Zero they talk cold. about a lot of things. I... For for what it's worth, Mister Tear. Um, yes, I, I think what Amai is suggesting is just a series of guidelines, like protocol, in dealing with supernatural incidents. Not I will unlike... put out there. No. I'm sorry. Once uh, Rhoda is done. Oh, okay. Um, so I, I assume 
that what Mr. Amai is saying uh, is that after he develops these guidelines and protocols, that he would present them to you and he hopes that you would be able to follow them? <laughs> yes. I don't mean I... to speak out of turn. <laughs> no, no. That helps quite a bit. Uh, I... For, oh, go ahead. Uh, for for Tyr, who has been dealing with Sonder running rampant through the tide, yeah. um, part of what he is doing with the... Uh, that is part of the tide training is recognizing what is a hostile creature and what isn't. Don't yeah. fucking attack shit that isn't doing anything. <laughs> He's very much trying to impart in the tide, like, the others who live here also live here. Don't just don't just hit shit because you think it's a ghost. Yeah, so at the at the mention of that, um, he like looks back over to Sonder and uh he he looks back and goes, Well if if this is a bond, as you put it, the main point of this would be to open up theoretical relations in the future. Like mm -hmm. she said. To have sort of a framework, um, so we're not just all going off and doing our own thing. I can assure you, my tide captain has briefed me thoroughly on the best of conduct, but at the same time, he scratches his chin. <laughs> I feel like having this... I feel like having a safety net behind that would be wise, especially with the part of the city that I'm unaware of. You'll get no complaints from me. He, uh... He, he nods and very seriously looks at you. Your conduct during the Lord of Lanterns incident two days ago was also exemplary. I have to admit I'm impressed. Thank you very much. I appreciate the praise. <laughs> In addition to this guideline, what I want to create is a space for exorcists to be able to talk with each other. Hmm. You see... With the incident with the Lord of Lanterns, I was illuminated to a certain thing that is afraid of us. Hmm. It is threatened and may seek to push us, to push us against each other. I see. So you're attempting to build stronger bonds so that that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he sort of like relaxes back and shrugs lightly actually a soft smile playing across his face <laughs> seems like a wise decision but it may be a difficult one he nods name the time and place the tide will be there <laughs> he surreptitiously looks at Jack <laughs> <laughs> vibrates out of existence <laughs> what's the fucking time nerd what is the time <laughs> tell me the fucking time right and now then, scream. and then some, the true time. At, at that mention Tyr actually stands up walks over in this direction frees Beretta <laughs> walks 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 leans down sort of like squats in front of Barbados yes Hmm. I think I see what's happening now. Oh no. You have my condolences. <laughs> what, what do you what what does that mean? Explain to me. <laughs> he looks back over to Beretta. Well, about five years ago, a certain group of people caused enough trouble with the cops that they were sent over to deal with us instead of their own organization. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I think you've pissed off enough people. He pats you on the shoulder. Sorry, you're probably stuck with us for now. No. <laughs> I, feel <as> <laughs> yeah. I feel as though it's more important that the factions of the city stop looking at themselves as conflicting entities and more like parts of a healthy functioning body. Oh no, we're enemies. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Enemies I, that can function together like a healthy functioning body. Look, all I'm saying, <laughs> I'm not an expert. Sonder puts a hand on Brett's shoulder, like a, like he's he's seen this. These yeah. two, he's like the 
<laughs> yeah, and like, Tira like looks over. Make no mistake, our end goal is the same as it's always been. The complete expulsion from Tempest, uh, of Tempest from this city. I'll be plain about that goal. RNA is working us to the bone to accomplish that goal. But I also recognize that you all are probably undesirable elements, which is why you're sitting with us at this table now, instead of over in Tempest HQ. How am I undesirable? I do my job very well. I'm sure you Sunder do. Thunder is growing exhausted. I, I make fun of Cerise's missing eye once. And this is what happened. I, I only did it once. And then Cerisa just said, well, I guess now you're in hell now with this fucking gremlin of a lady. Thunder shoots an exhausted look to Sandra. <laughs> Sutter is just like, eh. <laughs> Rui, Rui looks He's over like, at Barbados. Like Tell me you awful. consider yourself like liquid? <laughs> like liquid? What is... Is that like yes flexibility? No. Do I consider myself like liquid? No. Oh, no, that's a shame. You, you just said earlier that you didn't. <laughs> what was that? Wait, what, did, what did Rui say? He said, well, that's a shame. It seems like you just got turned into one by your boss. <laughs> oh, I, I, look, here's the thing. If Tempest gets... Ex Expelled, I will just quit and then find a new job here. Easy as that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Look, I, they need me more than I need them. Uh huh. Hundred mm percent. -hmm. Yes. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You sure is... about that? <laughs> Sonder has like he's like <laughs> he has put his elbows on the table and folded his hands. He's staring down at the table. <laughs> he's becoming visibly more like. Fucking, he's he he's gonna throw tear into a lake when this <laughs> he's like he's sitting there like faction shit is not supposed to be my problem. And here I am. <laughs> uh, door kicks open again. Seriously, are you guys back on it? <laughs> We're fine. We're doing fine. <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna cut away around then. And uh, first of all. We gotta cut over here. We gotta see Barbados train. Yeah. No, that's, uh, that's a subject for a different day. Oh, oh God. To see beef Bados. Yep. So, uh, I first, for everyone. first of for all, uh, oh, just, just a really quick aside. Um, this is this is gonna happen. Sonder, you throw tear in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> That can happen at any point in the future or past. I'm just establishing the reality oh, of his sins. Can I just have yeah. a... I, can I just have a throw his tear into the ocean button? Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> but, um... The gift you should oh. not squander. <laughs> oh, God, do not squander it. We're gonna go to this map as a loading screen. <sighs> it takes you a while, but, uh... Eventually, you do find your way back. Not to Tempest HQ, but... Back over to... Here. Whoa. Hard cut the Sonder throwing tear into the ocean on this map, too. <laughs> 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 tear will throw Sander will throw tear into the ocean at any any chance given. You two make your way back through the woods after a long investigation. Mm-hmm. Oh well look, we have a welcoming party. Hello. Yes, welcome back. How how did your investigation go? Pretty decent. We've It was wonderful. Oh, we talked to many people. We talked to uh, uh, this lady at the church. We talked to the tide. We talked to many people. We oh. marked down the ones that we've had threats and even some on the dossier that we haven't seen. As we threats. also talked to each other and learned about ourselves and explored our own emotional depths. No, oh, oh, how fast. The hell are you talking about? <laughs> well, Complicated come on. stuff. Starts to walk back in this direction. Mm. So, Miss Pietro. How did you find the Tempest? Uh, what do you mean? I'm curious. How did you find working for the Tempest? I found it to be complex, mm -hmm. not always comfortable, mm -hmm. and despite being unlikable, unruly, 
and generally unkempt. I feel like its intentions are good. Hmm. She, uh, he, he sort of, like, uh, purses his lips for a second. Oh, I was curious as a fellow, hmm, fellow person born and raised in Indigo, how you found people's attitudes shifting towards you. How did that feel? I certainly noticed a, a bit more hostility. And as somebody who was also born and raised in Indigo, I understand how an exterior military force intruding on your territory might make you feel uncomfortable. <laughs> but um, I suppose, as a public relations person yourself, uh, it's your job to um, ease that tension, correct? That it is. He, like, clacks his fingers together for a second. I just want to make something abundantly clear. This isn't a matter of uncomfortability or anything like that. I just, I want to make sure that we're on the same page when it comes to this. He, uh, he, he leans in and you see one of those eyes split open. <gasps> Miss Pietro, we are the bad guys. <gasps> <laughs> the eye pinch is shut again. There's no way around it. This is a military occupation of a of a port city. Um, we have automated weaponry, the most advanced hardware that we can quite literally buy. We are exerting our grip around the city, and there can be no mistake in this situation. We are the aggressors. We are the police force. We are those that keep order from falling into chaos. He but turns back and looks a, at you. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. He turns surely, back and looks Oh, you go, you go, you go. Surely as a public relations person, you understand the meaning of the term necessary evil? Hmm, of course. But similarly, as a public relations person, I'm particularly good at seeing through bullshit. <laughs> he, he smiles. This is the reality of who you're working for currently. Um, he, he sort of scratches his chin. At the same time, Tempest's role within the city will continue to grow, grow until an end. We intend to press out the tide as... All the other factions have been um, eradicated in the past. We will eventually boil this down to simply us remaining. He, uh, he, uh, like, takes off his hat and smooths back his hair for a second. I need you to understand that when it comes to preserving the city of Indigo, the city that I was born and raised in, I've decided to get my hands dirty. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to make sure that this is as peaceful as possible. But I have no misgivings about who I am. Miss Pietro, I am not a hero. His eye splits open again. <laughs> Neither are we. Hmm. Well, it seems that you internalized the lessons well. <laughs> he, uh, he looks around. I'm sorry for making you clean the stables. It was my idea. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Look for him. Look forward at that man ahead of you. That man is one of the biggest problems in this city. <laughs> and you're on his side now. <laughs> well, it's good to keep your problems close. <laughs> and elsewhere. You say that as this man oh. leers down at you. He's been giving you the stink eye pretty much constantly. Mm -hmm. How's the kid? At Beretta. Oh. <laughs> He just nods. I don't like you. <laughs> Fight me. Um. <laughs> okay. Uh, Would fighting me, fighting me, make you like me better? Hmm. He swallows the toothpick. <laughs> I see you're also a vegetarian. <laughs> but not tonight I gotta to pick my kid up at 6 yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, have fun 
Well, he's got kids. Yeah. Walks like in. A, like a daughter or something, I think. I don't know. <laughs> Moves in. Sid looks at the two of you. Well, it looks like you've been put through the ringer. Yeah. Your clothes look dampened and then dried. They're very greasy. Mm hmm. You want me to do your laundry for you? No, I'm good. I have maids for that. You sure? Surely yeah. you have more important things to do as a captain. He, uh, he sort of exhales as everybody strikes the dummies around. Look, I'm sure you're sick of lectures and ideals at this point, but, um, he sort of like gestures with his head. I have nothing better to do. <laughs> None of us do. <laughs> I would I would be honored to dry your clothes or whatever. Maybe get oh. you dinner or something. Do you need food, either of you? Yes, I'm starving. I haven't eaten in two days. Grandpa. Well, sure, I'll take food. Come with me. He uh he like looks back around. And uh for what it's worth, I'm just saying this, you don't have to necessarily listen to me. <clears throat> Wait until you've observed the full situation before casting judgment. Observe for yourself and draw your own conclusions. Don't listen to men who talk for a living. <laughs> oh, my job was never to judge. Mm. Well, Only to act on ideals. <laughs> I'm not going to express an opinion about that at all. The only thing that I have in my future is a date with the grill. <laughs> Beretta leans into Barbados. He mm -hmm. doesn't seem like the bad guy. <laughs> Honestly, Sid is one of the most pleasant people here. <laughs> though, it's really a sliding scale here at Tempest. Though, Beretta, look, Ryuji is mean on the outside, but I'm pretty sure nice on the inside. Sid is very nice and gentle, but I, if you get Sid mad, he's one of the biggest problems you'll ever face in your life you keep on listing problems <laughs> no uh, city's filled with them including <laughs> you good thing i'm not one of them I know. <laughs> <laughs> you step up those steps and you go into the barracks and yeah you have to tolerate sid being a gruff war granddad but um at the same time he does take extra care of you both of you. It's funny. For the first time, it seems like Sid seems to be interested in associating with you, Barbados. No, oh, that's because I did, did a job. I worked. It's, it's because you worked, yeah. But, um, elsewhere in the city. Hmm. Some amount of time has passed. And someone... <laughs> someone moves towards you, am I? Hmm. <gasps> moving. Yeah. Let me go like this. What time like, is it? Yeah. No, it's... What time is it? <clears throat> you continue to set up the clock tower. It's going well, but, um... Hmm. There are some complications. Getting this workable and getting the permission to almost reroute directions to the clock tower, almost like your shop, has been frustrating in itself. The gatekeeper is simultaneously extremely excited for your efforts, but also extremely protective. <laughs> so you're, yeah. you're just dealing with headache after headache, and something sort of wrenches its way forwards across the ground towards you. This time a little more... Hmm, focused? Moves in. Hmm. Hello, my. Hello, Jack. She rises up slightly, almost forming a skeletal long body, too long, too big, moves around. I thank you for... She motions to the back of her head. A long, almost comical key extends from the back of it, like a wind-up doll. <laughs> <laughs> I'm... Um... There was no problem. I felt like... <laughs> I felt like it was just right. <laughs> she sort of smiles at you. I... Again. She looks over to the clock tower. I... 
I will decide this time. <laughs> I... She's, like, struggling to find words, and... Oh, boy. This... You you feel you feel that same rush of air behind you as something touches down. I believe I can translate the feeling more or less. Stop me if I'm wrong. Uh, looks over. We were made for a specific purpose, woven into the very fabric of this district. You've done something rather different for her. Time has eroded away that purpose. As the people left and died, she lost it completely. You've given her something new. Now she has the ability to decide whether or not she wants to remain here. Mm -hmm. I... Happy. <laughs> <sighs> the gatekeeper sort of like shrugs his <laughs> shoulders and like shakes his head. Mm. <laughs> you I... He tries to think. I appreciate it, and I thank you for being with the city for this long. Slowly, he, creakily nods. <laughs> I apologize if I did not take the route that made the most sense. Hmm. Or thematically, I guess. But I felt like your memories of your master, that matters to you, and I do not want to take that place. Creakily, very seriously nodding. Then a voice rings out from behind you again. You always do that. Find your own path. <laughs> and then there's a <laughs> snort as the gatekeeper actually looks at you. And then there's silence. You make eye contact. I'll be going. <laughs> <laughs> he sort of just smiles. <laughs> this one slowly and shiftily moves over in this direction, creaking long bones made out of spinning gears, puts hand on door, turns around slowly. Um, uh, there's a slight call trying to put those words back together. Um, <laughs> what time is it? And that is where we're going to call it to a close. <laughs> yeah. The end of the session. Excellent time work, everyone. It. Yes. What fucking time is it? What fucking time is it? Clock's running again. I loved that. That was really good.